Oh, yeah. How's everybody doing? Mm, yeah. Hold on, guys. Remember, 16-second delay. 16-second delay. All right? So that means when I say something and then it reaches you, there's like 16 seconds. So just give me a couple of minutes, huh, to fix the, the tweaks. We were sailing along on a moonlight bed. Oh, there you go again. Oh, my goodness. I hate when this happens. Shut your mouth. Mr. Shut up. Mister, we don't want to hear you. You gorgeous beast, you. All right. Shut your mouth. Shut up. You see that? Could you hear me? Because, yeah, I'm trying to mute the YouTube and Facebook. So when I'm there, you won't hear me. How's everybody doing? This is Goodfellas. You see Goodfellas? I, I had wore it the other day, but I forgot to write Goodfellas right there. Hey, hey. Good fellas, you see that? I forgot to mention it like I was wearing my Tony Montana t shirt, mine. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I know Tony. The reason why I'm wearing good fellas is because it seems like I'm a clown, you know. I'm here to amuse you. What's so funny? I'm here to amuse you. No, you, Ellen. No, Ellen. No, you never watched that. Welcome, everybody. Help me to help you. I had did a text poll asking people what time did they want me to do this session. I asked, do you want me to do it at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, Michigan time, or 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, Michigan, Michigan time. And people said do it at 10 p.m. Uh, St. Pope, why? If he doesn't come, will that upset you? Will that upset you, St. Pope Leo the 13th, if he doesn't come? Why, you want me to just give this channel all, all completely to him and call it Ahmadian? What, is me here like to amuse you and entertain you, you little loser? The gesture, if you call me, I'm going to get the Shia to insult your mother. Take a hike before I block you. Oh, is Ahmed here? What, you dream of Ahmed right now, St. Paul? Do you burn candles to him? Man, dude. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. So I don't do a good enough job of getting them angry. So I don't do a good enough job of getting them angry. So I need Ahmed to get them angry. See? Oh, I'm sorry that I exist. Forgive me, sir. You know? Forgive me for my existence. Okay, well, gesture. If you're a Christian, sit back and relax and let me do my thing. I will be even more mean to you, Gesture, when you tell me what to do, okay? Sit down, relax, and enjoy. Now, <clears throat> do me a favor, guys. I don't know why it's buffering. Again, here we go. Let me know if the audio quality is optimal and it's perfect. I don't know why it's buffering here, but do me a favor. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. <clears throat> Share it on your social media platforms. And the most important thing you can do is be prayed up. We don't pray enough. I don't pray enough. May God save us from being hypocrites. We don't worship enough. We don't sing his praises enough. We don't fast enough. We don't study the Bible enough. We don't obey his word enough. We need to do more and more and more. So let's pray. Pray for me to be used, the, to be used of the Holy Spirit, to be the human instrument of the Holy Spirit, his mouthpiece. Pray the Holy Spirit becomes our teacher until the Lord returns or until the Lord summons us and we are his instruments so that we are the disciples of the Holy Spirit and never call yourself my disciple. I will be upset if you call yourself my disciple or student. May God destroy my pride, my arrogance, my ego, destroy my fake piety, my fake humility, my fake spirituality and give us pure motives purged in the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit, cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I will be very upset if you say, I'm a student of Sam Shimon or a disciple of Sam Shimon. Let us all be disciples of the Holy Spirit and pray for me because I struggle with the same sins you do. 
and it's constant temptation and battle that we finish the race with integrity and love Jesus Christ more and more and hate the world more and more and hate Satan more and more and pray the Lord will give me the grace, the health, the holiness and purity and strength to glorify the Lord in ministry until he summons me. Yeah, so please, I will be upset. I'm not putting on a show. I'm not trying to be, you know, all humble. I will be very upset if you guys make me more than I am. But one thing I won't appreciate either, you go attack me, mock me, ridicule me. That too is not toler tolerable. If you're going to do that, go ahead, do it. Just don't bring it to my attention, right? So do not make me more than I am. Do not do that. And may God save me from my pride, my arrogance, my ego. And if I have any psychological defect that causes me to be self-centered, maybe even a narcissist, may the Holy Spirit purge that out of us, out of me, and his purifying fire and wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, make us whole. Right? So please. Now... Well, there are people who attack me, St. Dennis. Let's begin in prayer, and then I'm going to put the link to see if they're going to be Mohammedans who will come and prove me wrong. Why is it these past days I've openly challenged Muslims to show up? If they can respect themselves and not swear and not ridicule, so I don't insult them, pulverize their prophet, remind them of who their mother slept with, the Shia, giving birth to them, then we can have a fruitful conversation. In fact, let me give you this link. God blessed me earlier today. God blessed me earlier today. Another divine appointment. It was God orchestrating it that I ended up on, ended up on, <clears throat> hold on one second. God's logic live stream and God's divine appointment. I spoke to that Muslim who actually showed up on my stream, I believe yesterday, the one I started making fun of, I think it was yesterday, say, man, your teeth are very bright white and they're sticking out and they're offending me and maybe you should do some Colgate commercials. Well, it turned out that guy was really convicted. What's up, idol killer? Good to see you, friend. It turned out that man was actually looking to have a serious conversation and not to mock or ridicule and he got rocked. I spent maybe, by the grace of Jesus Christ, glory to the Spirit for that divine appointment, over 40 minutes an hour, and go watch his reaction. He got rocked. He got shaken. He even admit that the things I showed him from the Quran, if it was done to his woman folk, he would not be happy with it. So then we told him, then why are you still a Muslim? He was shaken. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Spirit. And you could see his face, his reaction, reading about Muhammad, how he treated women, or, you know, sanctioning pedophilia, rape, adultery, and then his God being a grotesque humanoid, rocked. And I said, now, do me two, fa two favors. That's what I told him. Let me get you the link. I said, do me two favors. Number one, cry out to Allah and say, Allah, if you're the true God, and Islam is true, confir confirm it. But if Jesus is Lord, reveal it to me. And I go, second favor, start reading Gospel of John. And then tell yourself, in light of the teachings of Jesus, does Muhammad even come close? And he left. Now, I had, wish I had known he was sincere because I would have engaged him, not blocked him on my channel. But here it is. It was an amazing session. And then we ended the stream with that conversation. So I really believe this man is on his way to becoming a Christian. He even said, he goes, well, I was born into this religion. I go, well, so were the pagans. And that was their excuse against Muhammad. But Muhammad didn't buy it. So you were there too, Jameson? Okay. So there goes the link. Let me post it again. Watch it. I hope he comes. Because he was really sincere. And he got really rocked. I could see. Spirit was convinced. And I, and I even said to him, you know what I said? I go, from your face, I can see you're troubled and it's bothering you. And I go, you know why? Because you bear the image of God. Though tainted, it hasn't been effaced. And the reason why it's eating you up, you're getting convicted because that's a spirit convicting your conscience. Spirit is after you, I said. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Lepanto, you were there too? Well, I didn't know that. So pray for him. He calls himself peaceable Muslim. 
I hope he shows up. The problem is I blocked him from my stream yard. So he'd probably have to call me on Skype or use another account. It was an amazing divine appointment. See, these are the kind of conversations I want. I want sincere, genuine Muslims who won't shout, who won't go off at tangents, who won't lie and slander to engage me. I'm not afraid of any of your objections. My God is real. Jesus is alive. The Bible is his word. And when you seek the spirit, he gives you wisdom to show you how easy it is to defend the truth of scripture. So I'm not afraid of any of your pathetic arguments, but I will not tolerate bullying because we're not your dimmies. We're not subject to you. The Lord Jesus will deliver you into our hands and we'll bring you to the feet of Jesus, whether you like it or not. So anyway, so is that clear? So glory to God. Lepanto, you're getting me angry that you keep talking about I work out. Yeah, okay. Why don't you be a little humble, Lepanto? Okay, sir? But no, everyone, let me give you wor one word of exhortation as we begin. We need to do intense spiritual disciplines. We need to pray more, fast more, sing more, and I pray, I practice what I preach, study the Bible more, recite it, apply it, live it out. Go to church more faithfully. Take the Eucharist more faithfully, which I need to do a lot more of in Jesus' name. Serve in community. And we need to be physically fit. We need to be ready physically to defend our lives, the lives of our loved ones, the marginalized, and the oppressed. It is your duty to do so. So we cannot be lazy. The Muslims are all studying martial arts, jujitsu, weaponry, because they're ready for jihad. We need to be physically fit, spiritually fit, emotionally, psychologically fit to defend the innocent children who cannot fight for themselves so they won't be taken captive and raped. Older women, young boys, we need to. This is a serious thing. Don't take it lightly. All right? So keep that in mind. In fact, even your name, Lepanto, doesn't that refer to the Battle of Lepanto where the Catholics conquered the much larger Islamic army as they sought and cried out to the Triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, and asked the intercession of the Blessed Mother. Am I getting my history correct? Right? So that's why you're training. So I'm proud of you. Hope, is that you with a new uh, picture? Yeah. So do that, folks. You need to take it seriously. Because there'll be a time in which you will be the arms and feet and the human weapons of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to protect young girls, young boys from being raped, molested, and taken captive, and older people from being beheaded. You heard the story of Ahmed yesterday. You heard the story of Ahmed. He witnessed with his own eyes an older woman and her daughter being raped by ISIS, even though the older woman said, I'm old enough to be your mother. And you heard him say they took a nine-year-old boy, nine-year-old boy, and beheaded him without mercy in front of his mother. You heard it. Ortho Christos, good to see you. You heard it. He's a treasure. May God destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego, and jealousy, and envy. May he never let us get puffed up, but love one another and <clears throat> serve one another and think of the other more highly than ourselves. He's a gift, but pray God will constrain him as well because he's still human like I'm human, and he still struggles with sin like we all do, so we don't fall from pride and think we are God's gift to the church. We are not. The gift to the church is the Holy Spirit sent from the Father and the Son, to then empower us and give us these gifts to use for the glory of Christ. And I know myself very well. This is why you have to do honest inspection. What do I mean? Here, let me give you a verse. Paul tells the Corinthians who are sitting in judgment of him, thinking that Paul may not be a true believer. Look what he says. Look what he says. Let me open up the Bible. We're going to use New King James because English is a little easier for folks. Right? Look what he says right here. New King James, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Watch here. Here you go. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Don't deceive yourself. 
Do some serious introspection, self-examination. Examine the way you think, the way you live, the way you speak, the what you watch. Be honest with yourself because God is watching you. Test yourselves. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, in relationship in, with you, in communion with you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. So we have to daily ask the Holy Spirit to convict us to be honest with ourselves, honest self-examination, and ask the Holy Spirit to purge us of all impurities and to save us from every form of idolatry and live for Jesus Christ passionately. And so I can honestly, honestly tell you that I struggle with low self-esteem, infer inferiority complex, impatience, anger, pride, ego, lust, food addiction, just to name a few things. And because of my low self-esteem, it makes me crave attention and want praise and affirmation. I say I'm aware of that. Now, help me. I know it's going to buffer a little bit, but as long as the sound quality is optimal and the buffering doesn't affect the sound. Okay. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of my weaknesses. Because I have low self-esteem, it makes me crave affirmation. I want to be affirmed. When Uthman, the fat slob, returns from Hollywood to Balboa Park, then I'll go bury him like Jesus buried Muhammad, your dog in hell. So instead of hiding behind your girlfriend, Uthman, why don't you come and defend your God, Allah? Because he obviously can't defend himself. Okay. There it goes. And by the way, here's the link for the Muslims. Don't hide behind your overweight, obese girlfriend, Uthman Ibn Muta. Come and defend your own prophet. But you know you can't because your prophet can't be defended. He's under the feet of Jesus in hell. But let's see. Focus, guys. Anyone who goes off topic like Johan. My topic is not Pentecostal churches. My topic is this. I want to block you because you're showing no respect to the topic and the theme. Yep. Catch a boy who faked getting stabbed and he got humiliated because that's what Jesus does. He humiliates you dogs, you filthy swine. When you make it a career of blasphemy, he crushes your mouths to teach you the fear of Jesus because Muhammad is already in hell under the feet of Jesus, fearing the Lord. He made a mistake. It's too late for him. So are we ready now to begin? Let's begin in prayer. And we'll see if the Muslims will now defend their grotesque-looking human. And by the way, all glory to the Father again, to the Son, Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit. Son and Holy Spirit. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, Jesus Christ, glory to the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit, control my, my mouth, my tongue, purge my mouth and tongue, and I pray he does that for all of us. Save me from error, stammering, stuttering, confusion, misinformation, forgetfulness, and perfect these gifts of ministry Recall of every jot and tittle perfectly and empower us to obey the scriptures. Live out the scriptures to show to ourselves we love the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in love with him. All the stuff that you're hearing from Christian Prince and uh, Ahmed. When I tell you this, please don't take it the wrong way. You will find in my articles, such as when he talks about Allah having two right hands, a foot, right, and... Yeah, he is in hell. A foot? Well, you don't need to thank me. I'm speaking the truth. Muhammad is in hell. <clears throat> All of these are in the articles and rebuttals on my blog and on answeringislam.info. The Lord Jesus in his mercy allowed me to find English translations of these hadiths. Not all of them. There are a lot of hadiths not translated. And this is where Ahmed is a blessing. Ahmed is a blessing. Because he goes to the Arabic sources and he translates them. But disinformation, I'm not trying to bring attention to myself and denigrate. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is, you who do not speak Arabic, you who have been amazed at this information, the information was made available to you on answeringislam.info and on my blog since 1999. Why do you think I keep telling you, go read the articles, rebuttals, and go watch the older sessions? 
Because when the Lord put in my heart to go into full-time ministry, it was for the purpose of equipping you, finding these books, finding these sources, bring them together in one article so you can save yourself time and money. It's there that the throne of Allah squeaks. There. That Allah has three eyes or more. There. That Adam is created in the shape of Allah. That Allah's shape, his, his surah, is 90 feet tall. Already there. That Allah has a shin. Already there. Has a foot that he puts over hell. All of it. And here's the proof. Go look at the articles that I put in the description box. I put links to articles that I wrote within the last three years, and some are over 10 years old. It's been there. It's there. Why is it there? So that you guys can have this information, and I saw the Spirit to help you understand this information, and then share it for the glory of Jesus Christ, as long as you hear, see, and read correctly and accurately, and share it correctly. Like this guy, Christian Exposer. This guy is that Shia bastard, that stalker, who got sodomized by his uncle who wants attention. So let's see. He's going he's gonna to now remind me of what Muhammad did to Aisha when he beat her like a dog and the Shia did to his mother and what he does to children. Yes? Can I help they you? Were running, I see if you're going to man up. They were running away from me. I met this guy again, man. Are you going to man up, Sam? You're not going to You're going to laugh, man? You've been last man standing? Hey, listen, you're not going to talk The last about man standing, Sam. <laughs> you sold me. You sold me, Sam. You're ashamed, man. I didn't know I it was did... you. You come on 50 million. But you know you're not going to You're not gonna adjust the topic. So why are you here? I'm talking about the Hadith. You don't believe in the Hadith. So why are you wasting you... time? Uh, why, would I, why would he follow the Bible and, and want me to follow other than the Quran? Because so I'm you're saying that you cannot beat the Quran? Because your sect is not 85% of professing Muslims. I'm dealing with the largest sect in the world. I'll do sessions on Quran. Only you can come. But right now, it's not going to be relevant to you because you don't believe in Hadith. So you're going to waste your time. Okay. But I, I just want to say this. I'm thanking you. Wallah. I'm Why? thanking you for exposing the Hadith followers. You're helping Islam. You're right. helping Islam because that's not Islam. I'll that's... do sessions on Quran. Only then I'll let you come on. Yes. God Thank you so much. All the Christian apologetics. You're working for Allah. Allah is using you as, as mushriks to work for his deen, to expose all the munafiks, all the hypocrites following uh, hadiths just like you do. Following okay, so according to the Sunnis, they are idolaters and they commit Yes. Church. Every Sunni Muslim, every Shia Muslim is an idol worshiper, just like the Christians are idol worshippers. Following man-made books, okay. according to, according right. to Luke, I'll according to Abu Huraira. Okay, now I got to get to the topic. God willing, yes. shut up. next week we'll do Quran only, and we can talk about what the Quran says the Bible, and if the Quran, we'll do that for you, just for your honor, so you can come. Thank you. Okay, and do that's, one that's more thing. One, Sam, one favor. Okay. Ultimate truth. Can you unblock me? And ultimate I don't know truth. How to because once I block people from here, I don't know how to go and block. When I figure it out, yes, but just stay with this account. Even though you have an ex, which you're trying to be, so it's okay. Next week, God willing. Yeah, we do appreciate you, though. Thank uh, you. We do appreciate the, the work you do. Appreciate exposing me. the hadith. You're showing that you only can criticize Islam through the hadith, which is not okay. Islam. Okay. Ma Allah. When I do Quran only, we'll see if yes. it's only the hadith, okay? And just so you know, you're the last man standing, Sam. You're the last man yes, standing. Now, you know, the I want to get to topic before next week. You right? know. All right. Okay next week. Allez, Sam. All right, bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir, Sam. Parlez français? You no, parle okay. français, Sam? Okay, but hey, I want you to eat a lot of croissants because when they made the croissant, that was, mm -hmm. in, the sign, uh, that was in the shape of the crescent moon as a sign that they defeated the Muslims and they okay. ate up the crescent moon. So keep eating cr croissants. Okay, All right. I'll see you. Well, okay, Sam. I gotta get up. You want to keep talking? The, come on, okay. go. Yalla, I'll see you. Uh, yalla, I'm a... bye bye. All right, yeah. Did you guys know that the croissants, the croissants were made in honor of the Muslims being defeated, beaten, destroyed in the battle. So they made croissants 
to mimic the crescent moon on their flags is a sign that we ate up the Muslims. Yep, the Battle of Vienna. Yep, I'm not lying. Lepanto, you know history. Thank you. Help me, man. Be my fact checker because I'm not perfect. I'm more perfect than Sargon D. Yeah, guy, because it's cool because he keeps uh, following me. Did you guys know that? How many guys? Yeah, see, choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. Where's Zena? Where's my beloved Zena? You show up and Razo show up. Where's my beloved? Where is my hoop hoop? Whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know that. This is a fact. Here, Lepanto knows his history. At the Battle of Vienna, when the Muslims got eaten up, they made croissants shaped in the crescent moon because the crescent was the symbol of the Muslim army. And eating croissants is a sign that we ate up you Muslims. So now you guys, you should be buying up croissants like it's going out of style. And be eat croissants. and But make sure you're doing cardio though. So you may have to do like four miles extra so you can keep the weight off. But start stuffing your faces with croissants. See, that's why Robert Villarin, I like what he just said. Robert Villarin. Yeah, I, you guys didn't know that, huh? Did you know where I learned that, by the way? And we're going to get into the topic, I promise. Do you know where I learned that? You want to hear where I learned that for the first time? I didn't even know. I used to watch Hamza Yusuf and listen to him religiously. Religiously. Hamza Yusuf was my favorite Muslim scholar, and I learned tons from him. Because what I do is, as I've told you, God put in my heart, listen to the opposition. Listen to what they're saying. And listen and learn and read their literature. I read more and I watched more anti-Christian authors and speakers than I did Christians. I'm not lying. So I can learn how the enemy thinks. Matthew 10, 16, what does our Lord say? Behold, I send you as lambs in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as snakes, harmless, innocent as doves. So I studied their arguments. And it was there that I learned from Hamza Yusuf. He mentioned it, that when the Muslims got defeated at this battle, that they then made, again, I want to say Christians, right? Because they, are, they were Christians, but not everyone's a Christian. Some will claim it. But the, when the Christian defeated them, they then baked croissants. And the, that's why croissant, crescent, croissant, crescent, Shaped like the crescent moon because the crescent moon symbolizes Islam. And this represents them eating up the Muslims. He's the one who shared it. I go, oh, no wonder why, like Robert Valerian, I love croissants. So you see that? Good to see you, my brother. God bless you and your family. Even though that picture is kind of scaring me with your eyeballs. It's like they're about to pop out of your skull. But thank Jesus, you're a believer who loves the Lord Jesus. Because this guy is one huge muscular behemoth, but he is fighting fit only to use his physical prowess to defend himself, his family, and the weak and the oppressed for the glory of Jesus. And by the way, you know you look like the Indian version of Ergen Kaner, brother? Edison Prithi Viraj. Can you make your last, na last name a little harder to pronounce? You know? He... Looks exactly like Ergen Kainer, but the Indian version. All right, now let's begin. Oh, man, you guys got excited about the croissants. Now, by the way, how many of you will now stock up on croissants? Put a one. If from now on, you're going to be eating a lot more croissants, but you're going to have to do a lot more cardio because you're going to put on the weight. How many of you saying... Now, one, two, I'm going to be stocking up on croissants now that you know why they were made. Okay, Angel Brotherhood. Angel Brotherhood. Should I block you or Cyrus for talking about Persians instead of focusing on my topic? Angel Brother, what should I do? Should Cyrus go or you go? Who should go? There you go now. So stock up. Lepanto, Lord Jesus bless you, my brother. You are very knowledgeable about history, and I can learn because that's my weak area. Croissant is French. That's right. Croissant. 
Croissant hater Wasim Azuj. Mini Butch Anila. Croissant. And it sounds like crescent. Croissant. Crescent. All right, Razzles. So Razzles, just because Zena loves me and I love her, I'm going to give them a pass. I'm not going to give them a pass because of you. Because Zena loves you and I love those whom Zena loves and I hate those whom Zena hates. Okay, I'm going to let you. Right? Okay, let's begin. Yeah, Okay, let's begin, guys. Name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. <clears throat> in heaven and on earth. Let me repeat that again because the croissants went in my mind. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Holy Spirit, grant me perfect recall of prayers, of scripture, and empower us to live them out for the glory of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the glory you possess in union with them. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory both now and forever unto ages of ages in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit in the name of our god and savior lord jesus christ we pray now again let me remind you why i do it this way i still haven't learned how the catholics do it so i have to pay attention but i do it this way because the orthodox when they do the sign of the cross three for the trinity now watch this three one, two, three, Trinity, perfect and separable unity, and two for the hypostatic union. Jesus is truly God, truly human, and the true God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right now, people try to tell me I should do name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit from right to left, but you'll see me often doing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit left to right. Now, let me again explain why I do that. Okay, so just again remind you, we're creatures of repetition. We need to, my hand, what are you talking about? Listen, Andrew, I'm about to lay hands on you. We need to, we need to, see right here, three, right here, three, and two. We need to hear things repetitively until it becomes second nature. Now, the reason why I will do left to right is because the Father and Son sent the Holy Spirit into the world, plunge in darkness to take us out of darkness into the light of the Son who's at the right hand of the Father. Because if you go to Matthew 25, 31 to 46, those on the left are the lost who will be thrown into everlasting fire. Those on the right are those who are saved and glorified. Okay? Now, that's why I do it. But you can also do it right to left. And if your church does it that way, follow what the church says. Now, you can do right to left because Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father sends the Spirit from the Father into the world that's plunged in darkness. So both are valid, but do it the way your church does it in respect and honor of the church that you belong to. Because what did Jesus say in John 15, 26, 27? And Acts 2, 33, John 15, 26 to 27, and Acts 2, 33, Jesus, when he ascended to the right hand of the Father, poured out the Holy Spirit from the Father, because the Spirit proceeds from the Father. So when he ascended to the Father's right hand, from the Father's right hand, he poured out the Spirit into the world, plunged in darkness to bring them out of darkness into light. So either way, it's valid. But follow the way your church does it to show honor and reverence to the church established by Christ that you belong to. Are we ready now? Albert, you know I'm going to send you out of here, right? You know I'm going to get you out of here, right? Because you need attention. Okay, so with that said, Holy Spirit, Grant me the health I need to use it to glorify the Father and Son and yourself in union with the Father and the Son. Strengthen my throat, <clears throat> fill my heart, my arteries, my chest with health, for you are the breath of life, the Lord and giver of life. And save me from stammering, from stuttering, from confusion, from error and misinformation. 
perfect the gifts of ministry, recall of every jot and tittle, and to explain everything perfectly and illuminate our hearts and minds, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your fruit. Fill us with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, with your love, your passion, your boldness, courage, holiness, righteousness, purity, love, compassion, patience, gentleness, self-control, and destroy, crucify our flesh and the fruits of our flesh and enable us to resist and hate Satan and overcome him by the blood of Jesus Christ and empower us to submit to the Lord Jesus. And I pray for our loved ones, my daughters and ourselves, you feed us the holy flesh of Jesus Christ. Give us the blood of Jesus Christ for our salvation, for our food, our nourishment, our medicine, our healing to be made whole spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. And purge us in your purifying fire. Do that for my daughters, our loved ones. And take our hearts, the hearts of our children, my daughters, our loved ones. Sanctify our hearts. Purify our hearts in the blood of Jesus. And make our hearts the everlasting throne of the eternal Son of God, the Father's heart, your love, the virgin-born Son of Mary. And may he increase in us, may we decrease. Perfect our sight spiritually and physically. Open our ears to your beautiful voice. John out all other voices. And enable me to recall and even accurately represent what the Islamic sources say so that those Muslims who are seeking truth will see that Allah of the Quran is a false god. Muhammad is under your wrath, under the feet of Jesus. The Quran is a satanic counterfeit. And Jesus is Lord over Muhammad, over all creation. And they need the true Jesus to be saved and bring them. And enable us and empower us to muzzle the dogs who think they can blaspheme. To shame them and disgrace them. That they will never mock Jesus as long as you give us breath and use us as your holy vessels. Enable us to love Jesus more than anything. And never betray or deny or blaspheme or shame or disown the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what they do to us. Seal us. Preserve us. Constrain us to glorify Christ. Do not allow any wicked, idolatrous, blasphemous word to ever Come out of our mouths and tongues. And Spirit, I ask, not only you take over the session, take over our ministries, but take over our lives completely, our possessions completely, and not to just be lip service, but to be doers of your word. Take over the lives of our loved ones, my daughters, and bless the internet connection, the audio and visual qualities. And may I not be a nuisance to my neighbors. Bless them with sound sleep. And may I shine with the beauty of Jesus Christ and be Jesus to them. Take over and bring them. Bring them, Holy Spirit. Bring the Muslims to have sincere conversations so we can take them captive and bring them to the feet of Jesus Christ and bless this ministry and the work you've begun in us, complete it, complete in us for the glory of Jesus, not for the praise of men, and destroy my fear of not having enough and my lust of money to never pervert myself. None of us pervert and prostitute ourselves for money, status, position. And give us self-control. We depend on you. We trust in you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Give us the power to truly love you. Because we don't love you enough. We need to love you more. And love the Son more. And love Abba Father more. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. Of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Increase our numbers for your praise. All right. The articles that will be used in the session are in the description box. I've already done sessions on these. But again, creatures are petition. We hear something repetitively until it becomes second nature. And again, you don't need to ask me. I sound like a broken record. I give you full authorization. Take all the articles, all the sessions, translate them, upload them, clip them, disseminate them, but do not charge. And secondly, secondly, seek the face of the Holy Spirit to give you perfect attentiveness and clarity of thought so you can understand what you see. What you hear, what you read, and share the facts correctly. Why do I say that? Because I've caught people who've misrepresented me because they misheard me. Do not do that. Do not do that. Okay? Do not share something if you haven't understood it. Share all that you've understood. Do not misrepresent. I've caught people doing it. I go, where'd you hear that from? I never said that. So that said... Here's the topic today, my challenge. Let's see if we'll get some Muslims. We got Jill Mart again. I don't know who he is. I'm giving first dip to Muslims, not Christians. 
First dips to Muslims, not Christians. Like this guy, Jilmart, who's a whore, and his mother's a whore. He goes, suck my, and then he says Trinity. Because Jilmart is a whore. He's still upset that he doesn't know which relative sodomized him and sodomized his mother because the Shia still talk about his mother being this fantastic whore who did a lot of muta with pleasure because she was honoring Allah and his bastard, Muhammad, who's in hell. Because Jilmart is a bastard. He's a spiritual whore who has no honor, and he's not a man. He's a young kid who wants to molest children like his prophet did, which is why he hides behind a fake name. He's a whore because he wouldn't say this in front of my face. Okay? He's in the comment section, guys. Just to show you so you guys I'm not no, I'm not lying. So you guys don't think I'm lying. Here it is. Let me show you. So I sent him to the Shia who raped his mother. Here it is, guys. Here's what he posts. See? There it is. So let me put it on the screen so people, Sam, you're mean, you're cruel. Why do you talk to people like this? Okay. Let's see. That's what he said. See? You got it now? So you guys don't think I'm making it up. I'm not talking to Muhammad's genies. So you don't think I'm talking to Muhammad's genies. And you effeminate sissies who think you're Christian and doing God a favor, get the hell out of here. Don't come to my channel. You disgust me. You're worse than them because you pretend to be a Christian, but you are spineless cowards, effeminate sissies. Okay, get out of here. Go to Jamal Muhammad White, that spiritual bastard. May the Lord protect people from his teaching. So there you go, you see? So you guys don't think I'm lying. It was in my studio. Okay? So everyone there? So we're now ready to begin? John Dadishu, it's your world, sir. It's your world. I'm a squirrel trying to get a nut. But now, John Bedetishu, may God prosper you and bless your family. You know you're making money, and you're doing it lawfully. If I do not see any support from you, your mother, and uncles, because you guys got money trees, if you don't send monthly support to keep me in ministry to do the work of the Lord, I will pray judgment on you, and I will pray that I see you and lay hands on you and bless you. Just because you're taller than me, 6'4", and you can throw down, don't think I'll back down, right? There's something called PayPal and Patreon, sir. You know, man, my, no wonder the Bible says a prophet is without honor among his own countrymen. Okay, dear Danny, we love you, sir. Can you stop all your head? Because you haven't stopped spelling Assyrian. And I'm going to send you to Iraq to teach the people in northern Iraq Assyrian. Stop it, dude, and focus. Okay, let's begin. What I'm going to discuss... What I'm going to discuss is that according to the Sunni tradition, according to the Sunni tradition, Allah is a grotesque, deformed monster, a grotesque, deformed humanoid. Okay, now these articles, some of them are over 10 years old. They've been there for you to use. Thank the Lord Jesus. You have Ahmed who's now making it his entire focus to talk about these sources depicting Allah as a grotesque, deformed, ugly-looking humanoid that makes my cousin John Bedadishu look like a handsome stud. When you see how these, and they're authentic traditions, by the way. They're sahih or hasan, sound or good. These are not daif, weak. When you see how the Quran and these traditions describe Allah, he has at least three eyes. He's got two right hands and a left. He's got a shin. He's got a foot he'll put in hell. He's got genitals. He wears a waist sheet and a czar. And a womb grabs his genitals and makes him squeal. I'm going to show you that. His throne squeaks. And this is Allah. But Allah can also appeal as a young, handsome, beardless youth. So he's a shapeshifter. I'm not lying. I've done sessions on these. I'm going to repeat again. And it's all in English in the articles. So you don't need to look for Arabic and someone to translate. It's right there. The articles are there. And thank our sister Carolina. She's been posting them. And Allah also is gender fluid. He is gender confused. He's the original transgender. Because in one sense, it depicts him as a youth. But then as a grotesque, deformed looking humanoid monster with three eyes, two right hands and a left and a foot and a shin and genitals. But then it says he wears a veil like a woman. Do you know that? 
he wears a veil like a woman. It says he has a hijab. Do you know that, Lepanto? So it seems like Allah is the original transgender. The original transgender. Because not only can he change his shape, he's a shape shifter, but he also can appear as a boy, but then wear, wear a veil like a woman. The Quran says that Muhammad's God, Allah, has a hijab. The word is hijab, a veil. And here's the article to prove it. So let's begin. Okay, here it is. First article. You guys think I'm lying. Here it is. My article. And this is over 10 years old. And what's the name of the article so you guys can laugh? Okay. What's the name of the article so you guys can laugh? Now let the Mohammedans not bark in the comment section. Mohammedans, if you bark in the comment section, you're getting blocked. You can come on StreamYard and have a serious conversation if you can defend your God. Here's the article. It's in the description box. Do not entertain the trolls because they're going to get you distracted. Here's the name of the article, Sarah. Look at this, Sarah. Look at this, Ortho Christos. Look what I titled the article. Thank you, Andrew Martin. Allah, an exalted woman. Allah, an exalted woman. Examining the issue of Allah's veil. Follower of Shaitan. Follower of Muhammad ibn Shaitan. Follower of Haq. Come on my stream yard. Defend your prophet. I'm on a Muslim. He's sending Mecca to kiss the black stone. Do not engage the trolls in the comment section. Tell them to come on stream yard. Okay, because the trolls will be used of saying to distract you. Listen and learn. Stop being fools and falling for the same trap. Okay. Satan sends them so you don't pay attention. There is the streamer. I pinned it. Come on. Engage me. So Allah, an exalted woman, examining the issue of Allah's veil. So let's begin. And the word used is hijab. Hijab. Just like the Quran orders women to be veiled. Here are the verses, right? Here's one. And the word is hijab. You're going to see that the word hijab is used for Allah. Allah wears a, a hijab. Now here's the word it says about women. 3359. O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to draw their cloaks Jilbab, all over their bodies. This is the verse that the Sunni tradition says, ordained the veil, hijab, upon women, all over their bodies. I screen themselves completely except the eyes or one eye to see the way. That will be better that they should be known as free, respectable women, so as not to be annoyed. And Allah's ever off forgiving, most merciful, 3359. Yeah, they don't call. They're scared. They're cowards. And you think that this is their bread and butter and they can refute me. Here's another one that talks about women being veiled. 2431. 2431. Now watch, I'm going to show you. Allah wears a veil, hijab. Here, I'm, You guys think I'm exaggerating. Okay. Right? Hold on. Where do we go? Where do we go, my lovely? Where do we go? Here. And say to the believing woman, just chapter 24, verse 31, that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty that they should not display their beauty and ornaments except what most ordinarily appear thereof, that they should draw their veils over their bosoms. See, that's the veil again. Now the Hadiths explain, cover the head, not just the bosom. Because Quran only Muslims say, this only says cover your bosom. doesn't say cover your head. Well, okay, that's fine. And not display their beauty except to their husbands, their fathers, their husbands' fathers, their sons their husband's sons, their brothers, or their brother's sons, or their sister's sons, on and on it goes. Or their women, or the slaves whom their right hands possess, or male servants free of physical needs, or small children have no sense of the shame of sex, and that they should not strike their feet in order to draw attention to their hidden ornaments. And, O ye believers, turn ye all together towards God that ye may obtain bliss. All right, so the covering, hijab. The word is hijab in the traditions. Does Allah wear a hijab? Okay, you guys ready now? Are you ready for me to show you that Allah wears a hijab? Because I know how you guys are. Like you you rats, you're like, stop it, Sam. Stop it. Here you go. 4251. So Allah's the original gender fluid. Is it Aphrodite? 
Transgender? Here it is. Shapeshifter who can change genders? Here it is, 4251. 4251. It is not given to any human being that Allah should speak to him unless it be by inspiration or from behind a veil. Min wara hijabin. Hijab. Allah will only speak to you behind a veil. He will veil himself because he's a modest woman at times. Sometimes he becomes a very young, handsome-looking youth who's beardless. And I'll show you that too. You caught it? Hijabin. You guys who read Arabic, read it. It's 4251. No wonder the Muslims hate me, want to kill me, and kill Christian Prince and Rob Christian and Ahmed, because they can't refute us. Okay? He will speak to you behind the veil. He's got to be veiled because he's a modest virgin. Allah's a modest virgin. You know, you know how we know he's a modest virgin? Because he hasn't taken a girlfriend. Cool guy. I piss on Sekhar Hussein. He ran from me like your dog Muhammad ran from me who's in hell hiding. I piss on Zachary Hussein. I'll destroy that fat slob. He's less man than Aisha, cool guy. And you're a spiritual bastard, son of the Shia. Ask your mother. The night she did muta with them. Okay? You filthy, lying cowards. You scum of the earth. You're even worse than Muhammad. Because you have no honor like your prophet didn't. That's why we're destroying your bastard Muhammad by the power of Jesus Christ. Okay? So keep barking, you filthy dogs. Tell Zachary Hussein, I'll make him lick my shoes like Muhammad is licking Jesus' sandals in hell. Okay, hold on. You filthy bastards. You think we're scared of you. They don't know that God made me a Jilu. And if you ask John, but did he shoot Jilu or hot-blooded? Even the Jilus who can't fight like me. I'm hot-blooded even though I can't fight. Right. Anyway, so you see that that Allah wears a hijab. You guys see it, right? Allah wears a hijab, so He won't talk to you unless He's covered, like a modest virgin. And we know He's a modest virgin because He hasn't taken any girlfriend or boyfriend. Because it says, "How can He have a son, seeing He doesn't have a girlfriend?" But then when He changes gender, it may be a boyfriend. But see, he's a modest virgin. No boyfriends, no girlfriends for Allah. Or that he sends a messenger to reveal what he wills by his leave. Verily, he is most high, most wise. So he thought I was lying, right? All right, here's another one. 8315. And then Muhammad says that Allah's hijab is light. He veils himself with light so you can't see him like a shy virgin. On the day of judgment, 83.15, no indeed, but upon that day they shall be veiled. And this is again the word hijab. Lamah jubbuna. Lamah jubbuna. Hijab. They will not be, uh, be able to see Allah because Allah will have veiled himself. There will be a veil so that they cannot see Allah. Now according to Muhammad, what is Allah's veil? What is Allah's veil? Here it is. Sahih Muslim. Book one, number 344. What is Allah's veil? Okay, so you guys don't think I'm lying. So it seems like, Goody Lason, good to see you. And we'll be back, guys, don't worry. We will be back talking about hardcore, in-depth biblical doctrines by the grace of Jesus Christ. It seems like Allah is transgendered. He's an Aphrodite. Aphrodite, Aphrodite is it? Aphrodite, Aphrodite, right? Right, he is male and female, or he can be male and then change female. So he seems gender fluid, gender conflu confused. The original transgender. Amash has narrated this hadith on the same authority and said, The Messenger of Allah, camel piss be upon him, was standing amongst us and he told us four things. He then narrated, Oh, it's a herma hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. All right, thank you for cor correcting me. Where did I get Aphrodite from, or Aphrodite? Okay, he's a herma. Man, I hate some words. They kill my lisp. Herma, hermaphrodite. Well, technically, Emmy, herm, Aphrodite, herm, Aphrodite, hermaphrodite. See, I was right technically. I just forgot the herm part. So don't be a germ. Okay, 
trying to correct me. You see it? Herm, Aphrodite. So technically I was right. I gave you part of the word, Aphrodite. I just forgot the, the Herm part. So don't be a little germ, bacteria, hermaphrodite. Or anyway, so what did Muhammad say? Four things about Allah, right? He then narrated the hadith like the one reported by Abu Muawiyah, but did not mention the words, his creation, and said, his veil is the light. His veil is the light. You caught it? So does Allah wear a veil? Yes, it's light. So Muslims... Why does your God wear a veil like a woman? Why does your God Allah veil himself like a shy virgin girl? Why is he wearing a veil, a, a hijab? Can anyone tell me? Are you here, Muslims? Come on. StreamYard link is there. Open challenge. Come and defend your Allah. Come and defend your Allah. Yeah, Allah's the Alma. I like that. I like you, that Pentecostal Je Jephetite. The Alma, yeah, he's the young, shy virgin. You caught it? Okay. So that's proof number one. Don't forget all the information in the articles in the description box. So let's go to Allah having genitals. You guys want me to talk about that? Allah's genitals? <laughs> Allah's genitals? Okay. Now, not only that, not only does Allah have genitals, I'm going to now read to you a silly tradition that's sahih, sound. Sound tradition. Where it says that when Allah created creation, the womb, the womb stood up, yanked Allah by his genitals, and made Allah shout, Oh, stop, stop! Do you know that? By the way, only way, we don't use WTF, what the... Puck. We use what the fudge. What the fudge, sir? We don't swear here. You think I'm kidding, right? Do you th you think I'm kidding? I'm now going to show you from the article. And please do not let me end the session without telling you that Allah so loved the world that he sacrificed his foot in hell to save Muslims from going there. You know how you have John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, Allah did something else. For Allah so loved the world that he gave his foot in hell to save Muslims out of it. And I wrote an article on it. Here it is. Again, you guys think I'm lying. Here it is. Here's the article. Guys, here it is. Yeah, I'm not lying, Hope. Hope you didn't know that. So Hope's like, no way. Yeah, there it is. Click on it. Guys, click on it. The name of the article is, For Allah so loved the ummah that he gave up one of his feet. So make sure I mention this right after Allah having genitals. Now, what does that mean? Because it says, hell will say, is there more? Hell is going to be hungry. More, and then Allah will put his foot. Cut, cut, cutty, cutty. So Allah is going to put his foot in hell to shut the mouth of hell so that hell will be satisfied and stop saying, I want more. Send me more. So Allah loves you so much. Hope. Allah loves you so much that he will sacrifice his foot in hell to save you from it. Doesn't that make you thankful? Oh, Allah. Thank you, Allah. Allah, you sacrifice your foot. And your hairy shit. Maybe it's not hairy after all. But anyway, you're sacrificing for me, Allah. Oh, oh yes, yes. Abdul Rahman. Aisha. Abu Bakr. Omar, come here. La, 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 la. Man. La, 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 Allah so loved the world. Let me tell you how much he loved you, Abu Dhar. Let me tell you how much he loved you, Abu Dhar. Oh. Zayed ibn Haritha. Oh, Muawiyah, Abu Sufyan. Let me tell you how much Allah loved you. In fact, I'll do that now because you got, we're into it. Let me, say, let me tell you how much did he love us? Ahmed ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. 
Ibn Abdul Uzza, how much did he love us? Oh, let me tell you how much he loved you. He loved you so much that he said to hell, shut your pie hole, shut your mouth. You can't have any more. So here, take my foot. Here, my foot right here. Take it, take it. Here, I'm going to put my foot in hell. Right now, here, be satisfied with my foot. Yeah, that's it. No more, you see? And for all eternity, my foot's going to be burning, burning for you because I burn for you. Yes, I burn for you. You think I'm lying? Okay, you guys think I'm lying, right? Okay, here you go. I burn for you, man. I burn for you. Oh, I shall. I'm burning for you, my love, man. I'm burning. Here it is. Okay. Let's do it here. Aisha Buni's translation, Sai collection of Al Bukhari, chapter 68. Oops, hold on. What the heck? Okay, I got to update the link. That's good to know. I got to update the link. All right. Anyway, here it is. I'm going to have to update the link, but you can find it online. Here it is. It's in my article. Let me just read it. You think I'm lying, right? Sal Bukhari, guys. Yeah, my love, my burn for you. Burn up with love, Sarah. Love, Sarah. Love. Okay, here you go. You guys think I'm lying, man. Man. Here you go. Right here. So he's going to burn his foot up. Burn his foot. Okay. Read with me, you skeptics. Read with me. Hadith number 4567. It is related from Anas that the Prophet said, they'll be thrown into the fire and will say, are there more to come? Until he places his foot in it. In it and says, enough, enough. Cut, cut. Okay. Allah will put his foot in hell for you. Better than putting his foot in hell than putting his foot in your mouth or his foot up your arse. <laughs> Here, number 4568. It is related, Marfu, that Abu Huraira said, that it will be said to Jahannam, are you full? It will reply, are there more to come? Then the blessed and exalted Lord will place his foot on it. Now the word is fiha. Ask anyone what fi is. Fi means in. Allah will place his foot in it. Fiha. And it will say, enough, enough, God, God. You see, was I lying? Guys, was I lying? It's right there. Said Bukhari. All right. He will put his foot in there. Better he put his foot in hell than in your mouth or up your arse. Oh, thank you, Allah. You didn't put your foot up my arse. And you didn't stick it in my mouth. But out of your love for me, you put your foot in hell so you can burn. Show me how much you love. You burn for me, Allah. La, 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 la. Okay, so let me give you, okay, let me give you this version here. I got a couple of them. This comes from this book, Downloaded, 110 Ahadith Qudsi. Okay, 110 Ahadith Qudsi. Okay, there you go. Right here, download it before it's gone. So I'm quoting from that. Here you go. Let's see. Am I lying? And then we're going to go into Allah's gonads, Allah's genitals. So you can't figure out, are you a woman? No. no. Then why do you veil yourself? Oh, yeah. Well, some days I am a woman because I get hurt and I'm very sensitive. But then it says you're a man and you got genitals. You got gonads, Allah. Okay. Watch here. Here it is. And by the way, if they tell you this is metaphorical, you know how you destroy that? If they tell you it's metaphorical, this is how you destroy it. Say, hold on. People being thrown into hell, is that metaphorical? Is that literal physical? No, it's literal physical. So will people actually be thrown into hell physically? Yes. So then Allah's foot in hell must be literal as well. Okay? Don't let them deceive you. Here it is. This is Hadith Qudsi, meaning narrations attributed to Allah, where Allah is speaking and Muhammad is narrating. Narrated Abu Huraira, number 36. The prophet said, once paradise and hell argued with one another. Hell said, I've been given preference by the oppressors and tyrants. Paradise said, what is the matter with me that only weak and humble people enter me? Allah said to the paradise. So again, what do you learn from here? 
Muhammad thought everything has consciousness. Everything has awareness. Everything can speak and has intellect and consciousness. Everything. Everything. So here hell and paradise are speaking. And I'm going to show you that there's a womb, an ancient womb that was there at creation. And that womb reached out and grabbed Allah's nuts, his gonads. Now understand what it means. This womb must have hands, a womb, a primordial womb, an ancient womb that was there at creation. And it reached out and grabbed Allah's nuts. I'm not lying. We're going to show it to you right now. I'm not lying. That means the womb must have hands. That's one freaky looking womb. A womb that can talk, that can actually grab another man's gonads. Okay? But let's finish this hadith. Yeah. Let's finish this hadith. Okay? Okay, so then, what is the matter with me that only weak and humble people enter me? Allah said to the paradise, you are my mercy. So Allah's not having conversation with heaven, uh, heaven and hell. You're my mercy. Then what the hell are you? Oh, pun intended. Get it? <laughs> you caught it? Allah says to paradise, you're my mercy. Then what the hell are you? Oh, yeah, you're hell. Forgot. Oops. <laughs> Man, I should have been a comedian. A stand-up comedian, but sitting down. <laughs> I will bestow mercy through you on whom I wish from among my slaves. And he said to hell, who the hell are you? And he said to hell, right? <clears throat> Rather, you are, what are you? My torment. I will torment by you whom I wish from among my slaves. The prophet added, each of them will take its capacity. As for hell, it will not be filled. When will hell be filled? Read it. As for hell, it will not be filled until Allah puts down his glorious, glorious glorified foot. What a glorified foot it is. In it. In it. So hell will only be satisfied when Allah takes his glorified foot and stuffs it in hell. Then we'll say, enough, enough, enough. Qatti, qatti, qatti. Qat, qat, qat. At that time, all its parts will be filled. Filled up. Allah will not treat unjustly any one of his creation. As, regarding, as regards paradise, Allah will create other creations to fill it. Now watch. What's the grading here? Here it is. Here's the grading. Okay. Here it is. This is from that source. Here you go, guys. Read with me. In my article, I just gave you the link, and I'll share the link again. It's in the description box. This hadith is sound and reported by Bukhari and Muslim. Okay? It goes on to say, here's what it goes on to say, right here. Look at the comment. This is the comment by the translator. Okay? Here you go. On doomsday, Allah fills hell by putting his foot a foot that suits his glory and no human brain can perceive. You think? You think? A foot that suits his glory and no human brain can perceive. I wonder how many toes does Allah's foot have? How big is it? It's beyond comprehension. As for paradise, he fills it by a new creation. This hadith reveals that the mercy of Allah, the mercy of Allah supersedes his anger as he will not fill paradise too by putting his foot. You caught it? Okay. Do you see what it just said? He's got a foot that is glorious, glorified, fitting his glory that human brains cannot comprehend. And they'll tell you his foot is like unlike any other feet. Well, you're not saying much because my foot is unlike a camel's foot. A camel's foot is unlike a cat's foot, paw. A cat's paw is unlike a dog's foot. No one's foot is like any other foot of some other species. But we all have feet. So what are you telling me? You ain't telling me nothing. So did I give you proof? Allah will put his foot... In hell as a sacrifice for you. Here's the article. Here's the article. It's in the description box, but I'm putting it again. Let me now shorten the link because 
sometimes I used to make a mistake with the URLs. Guys, how in the world can you have people with half a brain cell believing this garbage, defending this garbage? Okay. No, Kiri Leisun. See, this is why you're a kafira. When Allah stuffs his foot in hell, he blocks his gonads from descending there. Because when his gonads want to go down, the foot is right there to block it. So it keeps bouncing up and down. Oops. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I wonder if he gets pedicure. And you know what? I do hate, by the way, ladies, I hate color polish, color nail polish. I only like French, pink, right? So if Allah, if he colors his toes red, that's it for me. I can't follow Allah. If it's now pink, okay, maybe maybe I'll take shahada. But if it's French, definitely I'm taking shahada. Yep. Okay, so are you ready for Allah's gonads? You stupid Sam. You're so silly, Sam. Sam, you so silly. So, hey, can I do that preacher again? The, the, I want to do the preacher thing one more time. I want to pretend I'm a Southern Muslim. I'm a Southern Muslim. You know, I'm from the South and I'm Muslim. I'm preaching a sermon on Allah's love. Can I do it one more time, guys, with your permission? Because we have no customers, no Muslims showing up. Can I do it one more time? Imagine, you know, you know how you have these Southern preachers when they preach about how God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son. So you don't down. So okay, I want to do that imitation one more time. Okay, Marcy Lynn, how are you, sister? Good to see you. One more time. Oh, Umma, I want you to hear about Allah's great love for you, oh, Umma. Yeah, yeah, Umma. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you. Zainab, yeah, I'm talking to you, Zainab. Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, you, Abu Sufyan. Yeah. I want to talk about how much Allah burns for you. Yeah, He burns. With love and compassion. He's a Rahman, a Rahim. Don't you know what a Rahman, a Rahim means? A Rahim. You know what I mean? I, I sound like Scooby Doo. Shaggy. A Rahim. Yeah, a Rahman, a Rahim. Let me tell you about him being a Rahim, a Rahim. La 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 la. La la la. La 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 la. Let me get back to the sermon. Don't get confused. Oh, he burns for you. Do you know what Allah's going to sacrifice for your salvation? Yeah, you, you. Come here, Abu Dhar, Abu Huraira, Dehiel Kelby. By the way, for you Americans, Abu Huraira means the father of the cats, and Dehiel Kelby means Dehiel the dog. So, hey, you, father of the kittens, father of the pussycats, come over here. Come over here. And you, Dehia, the dog, come here. Bow, wow, wow, yippee, yay, yippee, yo. Allah loves you so much. He's going to sacrifice his foot. He's going to put it in hell. And he's going to let his foot burn, burn forever and ever. So when you see Allah on the seat shaking in pain, when he's doing this, it's because he's getting tormented so you can be saved. Oh, yes. Now, I want you to come before the altar right here. Softly and tenderly, Allah is burning. Burning his foot in hell for you. All right. I have to let that out. Oh, God. They I had to let it out. Let it out, Sam. Let it out. Do you like how I took that song? See, now the Muslims are going to take that song, you know, and softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, and they're going to change it. Softly and tenderly, Allah is burning, burning his foot for you. Why do you tarry when that foot is getting cooking, cooking like big barbecue? Come to the stone, come to the stone, lick that black stone, lick it good. All right. 
Logos. Theo. It's okay, Sam. It's all right, Sam. Everything's going to get better. It's okay, Sam. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Whew, okay, now that's said. Let's go into Allah and his gonads. <laughs> Let's go there. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. I do love that song, but I had to do one in honor of Allah. Here's my article here. Islam portrays Allah as a finite, limited, temporal, embodied soul. Here it is. And we're going to talk about Allah's deformity. Now, where are the Muslims, guys? Here it is. Here's the article. Islam portrays Allah as a finite, limited, temporal, embodied soul. Now, Hope, did the Dean show? Did the Dean show ever share any of these things to you? Okay. Here it is. That's the name of the title. I mean, name of the article. And here's the article again. Now, let's talk about his gonads. <laughs> All right. You thought I'm lying, right? Here we go. This comes from, and I'm going to give you a female scholar of Islam talking about some of the ancient disputes among Muslims regarding the test of fidelity that if you could affirm this hadith that Allah has gonads, then you were a true Muslim. Now, here you go. Here's the source I'm quoting from. The divine traditions, okay, Al Ahadith Al Qudsiya, and I have it right here, rendered into English by Dr. Ibrahim Al Salik, Dar al Fiqr, Beirut, Lebanon, 1994, Chapter 12, The Lord of Glory, Speech to the Womb, Ties of Kith. You see that? Speech to the Womb, he's talking to the Womb, Ties of Kith and Kin, pages 80, 82, okay? Okay, now let's read. You ready? Okay, watch here. Come home. And this is based on chapter 47, 22 of the Quran. Okay, you guys, go. Let's read. God, I'm making it up. Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, reported Allah's prophet as saying that when Allah had finished creating all things, ties of relationship arose, womb, and seized the loins of the compassionate one, grabbed his nutsack. It's right there. This is a Muslim translation of the Hadith. Am I making up? And notice Allah's reaction. Seize the loins of the compassionate one. So Allah has loins. He has genitals. He has nutsack. And then from the pain, Allah said, Stop! Ah, stop, man! Damn you! Surprise, David. Okay, now watch. Right there. And they said, this is a place for whom, for him who seeks refuge in thee <clears throat> from being cut off. He replied, are you not satisfied that I should keep connection with him who keeps you united and sever connection with him who severs you? He's talking to a womb. And I'm going to show you where other translations translate the Arabic correctly, womb. <clears throat> they said, certainly, O Lord. He replied, well, that is how things are. Abu Huraira said, recite if you wish. And now Abu Huraira is telling you, this hadith is the explanation of chapter 47, verse 22 of the Quran. Then is it to be expected of you, if you were put in authority, that you will do mischief in the land and break your ties of kith and kin? Who transmitted it? Bukhari transmitted it. Okay. Now, let me read. Okay, well, let me show you here this one as well. Chapter 4722 is the reference. Now watch here. A noted female scholar of Islam in her book, Livnat Holtzman, Anthropomorphism. And I have the book right here. I have it right here. Anthropomorphism in Islam, The Challenge of Traditionalism from the year 713-15, Edinburgh Studies in Classical Islamic History and Culture. Edinburgh Oh, I got a typo. Darn it. All right. I got to go back and correct it. All right. Edinburgh University, page 209. Here it is. So you can see the source. And I'm going to quote. She translates the Hadith from Arabic into English. 
Same narration, meaning same encounter of the womb and Allah. Here's the source. It's in the article. You watch here. Here it is. Livnot Holtzman. She takes Arabic sources and translates them in her book, which I have. I have it. Okay? So people don't think I'm lying. There it is. Page 209. Now I have a typo. I have to fix it. God willing, Lord, remind me to fix it. Let's read her translation of this report. You ready? Here we go. And she's going to tell you where she's getting it from. So you guys ready? Here you go. Let's read. You don't think I'm making it up. Abu Huraira narrated on the authority of the prophet when God had completed the creation, the Rahim, Rahim is womb. Rahim, womb, stood up. The womb stood up and seized the loin of the merciful. Ah, oh, my lisp. Achadat, achadat be hakwi, hakwa. That word hakwa. Hakwi al-Rahman. Hakwi. What did the Rahim do? The Rahim is the Arabic word for womb. The womb stood up. So there's a womb that can stand up, that can talk, that can touch. So this womb has obviously legs and hands. That's one freaky looking womb. And then what did Allah say to her? He said to her, stop it. Ooh, ow. Not so hard. Okay. And she said, this is the place where a person seeks your protection from the enmity among relatives. He replied, will you be satisfied if I stay close with the person who makes you close to him and be detached from the person who detaches himself from you? She said, of course, my Lord. So the womb's having a conversation. Allah's talking to the womb. So Allah talks to paradise, talks to hell, talks to the womb. Who the hell does he not talk to? Pun intended. Of course, my Lord. And he said, so here then, this shall be granted to you. Granted to you. And again, Abu Huraira added, if you want, if you want to know where this is coming from, right? You can recite the chronic verse. If you, the hypocrites, renounce the faith, you would surely do evil in the land and violate the ties of blood. That's 47.22. Now watch. Where is she quoting from? Here it is. Here's the source. She gives it to you in her footnote. Footnote on page 253. Hope, I hope you're learning this. Al-Bukhari al-Jami. She's quoting Bukhari. Volume 3, page 292. Kitab al-Tafsir. Bab wa tuqattiyu ar- Okay, Ar-Rahmaqum, Ar-Rahmaqum. Sorry, I got to see, I got glasses. For the sentence, I stay close with the person who makes you close to him and be detached from the person who detaches himself from you. Bukhari, in Arabic, translated. Everyone got it? So what do we learn? There's a womb, a premortal womb at creation that can talk, that can stand, that can grab. This woman is going to grab Allah's nuts, his gonads, his hakwi, his hakwa, his genitals. And from grabbing his genitals, Allah is going to react, stop it! Now, you may not understand the point of this narration. You guys want me to explain what the point of this narration is? The nonsense? What's the point of this narration? Can I explain it for a minute so you guys get the idea? Okay. What this tradition is saying is that Allah made a covenant with this primordial womb. Because how are we related? By the womb. The womb, I come out of the womb, you come out of the womb. If we come out of the same womb, we're related. So Allah swore to the womb, if anyone severs ties with relationships. So if a brother cuts off ties with a brother, or a cousin with a cousin, or an aunt, I will then punish them. So Allah is promising the womb, look, I'll make a deal with you. Because relationships are established from the womb, and you're the original womb, I will punish any people who sever their relationships, relationships that were forged from coming from the common womb. So he's talking about <clears throat> punishing anyone who breaks 
ties with relatives, relatives that are forged from coming out from a common womb, right? In order to make sure this ancient womb will be at rest and peace. She goes, okay, Allah, you're going to do that? Thank you. This is the original womb. A womb that Allah created, not eternal, created. This is the womb of all wombs. All wombs come from this womb. So the original womb from which relationships are forged is a living womb that can speak. And the womb is a woman, a female, and can stand and grab. So that means a woman grabbed Allah's nuts. Because Rahim is feminine. That's why Allah speaks to her as a female. So here is Allah's companion. Sahaba, this is Allah's companion, his girlfriend, because she was allowed to grab his testicles, his nuts, his genitals. I'm not lying. You read it. Exactly. Because you're my woman, you're my sahaba, you're my lady, you can grab my nuts, girl, but just don't squeeze too hard, girl. This is Islam. <laughs> I like her reaction. I can't believe paper was wasted to write this filthy garbage down. Yeah, Jameson. So men, take courage. Just like women have hurted you, hurt you in the past, there was a woman that hurt Allah. So take courage knowing that Allah got hurt by a woman who squeezed his nuts. So you should feel good about it because Allah knows your pain. And he knows it literally and physically. <laughs> okay. And here's the article again. Kitty Layson, you are a witty sister. <laughs> Here's the article again, if you think I'm lying. But wait, we got a few more on this topic. Okay, there goes the article. All right. So where are the Muslims before I read the rest of this? Muslims, where are you, dude? Come prove me wrong. Come say you're a liar, Sam. It doesn't say this. Come put me in my place. Because threatening to kill me and killing me ain't going to end this. These facts are now spread all over the world. By the power of Jehovah Jesus, Muhammad's God and destroyer, and you can't stop the avalanche of apostasy this will result in. It's going to destroy Islam. Now, I hope this guy, okay, I thought, okay, now watch here. We, I thought we had a customer. You better be a Christian, dude. Now, here's a few more from my article. Okay, this comes from Sayyid Bukhari again. Here is the link to the online version. Online version. Now you guys can do what Ahmed is doing. You guys can take my articles. You don't need to ask me. Freely I was given. Freely I pass on. Freely I give because freely I receive. It's your stuff. Just use them. Start TikTok accounts or YouTube channels or make clips. Use them. Present them through your own unique way. Multiply this. Okay. So here's the idea. It's Bukhari. Okay, let's read it. Sal Bukhari, volume six, book 60, number 354. Watch here. And we're going to go into other deformities of Allah. Oh, and by the way, in the discussion I had on Avery's channel, God's Logic, when I brought up some of this hadiths, not all of these, when I showed him that his God appears as a beardless youth who has hands and fingers, he got stumped. When I showed him that the spirit appears as a man, he got stumped. You go, go see his reaction. This stuff works. These are arguments we've used in actual spiritual battle, in debates and evangelism. They work. They're irrefutable if you know how to present them clearly in the power of the Holy Spirit and you're prayed up. Okay? So now let's read this. Okay? This is now online. 
This translation translates Rahim correctly. So you were there, archive, you saw it, right? Narrated Abu Huraira. The prophet said, Allah created his creation, and when he had finished it, the womb got up. See? Not lying. Rahim means womb. And caught hold of Allah. Now this translation didn't want to translate it the way it should be. Whereupon Allah said, what is the matter? What is the matter, sweetie? It's not time. Betty by. Now if we take this with what the Muslims say about Allah's kursi, the kursi is a, is a golden bed. That means the womb couldn't wait to jump in bed with Allah. Hold on, sweetie. Let me finish. And then you can jump on my kursi. And then we can then do dingy dingy on my golden golden bed. Be patient, my sahiba. Okay, so the prophet said, Allah created his creation. And when he had finished it, the womb got up and caught hold of Allah. Whereupon Allah said, what is the matter? Wow, what's wrong, sweetie? Why are you so upset? There, there. On that, it said, literally, she said, I seek refuge with you from those who sever, see, cut off ties of kith and kin, who sever <clears throat> relationships. I seek protection from that, Allah. You owe me. After all, who grabs your gonads besides me? Who squeezes them nuts? On that, Allah said, will you be satisfied? If I bestow my favors on him who keeps your ties, who keeps relationships, and we withhold my favors from him who severs your ties, on that, she said, literally, she said, it said, yes, my Lord. Oh, I knew I can count on you, big boy. Ow! Watch how I squeeze them later on the golden bed. Then Allah said, that is for you. Abu Huraira added, if you wish, you can recite, would you then, if you were given the authority, do mischief in the land and sever your ties of kinship? Okay, now, I'm going to quote to you Ibn Kathir's exposition of 47.22. Okay. Here it is, Ibn Kathir explaining 47.22, which is the basis of, of these hadiths. Here it is online. Oh, man. Oh, good. Here it is. I did update the link. For a minute, I thought it's only. Here it is, guys. Here it is. Read it. Alam.org. The abridged English translation of Ibn Kathir in 4722. Go read it from the Muslim site so you don't think I'm misquoting. Okay? There it goes. Now, let me read. This is funny because Allah actually wears a waist sheet. He wraps himself with a garment, a waist sheet, a garment to cover his nuts and genitals. I'm not lying. Here it is. You're like, come on, man. You got to be full of it. All right. Allah wears a garment. Here it is. Little translation of the Arabic done by Muslims. Darul Salam, they're Salafis. I didn't write this. Al Bukhari recorded from Abu Huraira that Allah's messenger said, after Allah completed creating the creation, the womb stood up and pulled at the lower garment, his izar of the most merciful. So what more proof do you want? Allah is a material, spatial being. He wears a garment, a waist sheet. He's got genitals. He's got gonads that can be yanked at. He's got foot, if not feet. He's got two right hands and a left and eyeballs and he's got a shin. I don't know if he shaves it or not, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. What more do you want? Okay, he's wearing a garment. Are you seeing it? He's wearing a garment. Why aren't the Muslims sharing these hadiths with you? Why aren't the Salafis sharing these hadiths with you. See, we believe God is spirit. And as spirit, he's uncreated. He's immaterial. He's not spatial. He's not bodily. But he's almighty in that all 
that he created, all the shapes and forms. Being almighty, he can appear in any shape and form and multiple shapes and forms and be bound by none of them. And we don't believe Jesus has always been a man with a physical body. The eternal word became man and took on a physical body. So as man, he has a body, but as God, he's spirit and bodiless. And yet they believe their God has always existed. Guys, the Salafis believe their God has always existed with gonads, genitals, nuts, with shin, with foot, with three eyes or more, two right hands and a left hand. And he wears a garment. And he sits on a throne and it squeaks from the weight of his ass. Do you know that? You think I'm lying? I'm going to read you the Hadith where it says that when Allah sits on the throne, it groans, it squeaks from the weight of his ass cheeks. You think I'm lying? I'm not lying. It's there in the article, quoting authentic sources. Yeah. And it's English, Archive Sarah. God has blessed us with Christian Prince, Rob Christian, Ahmad, Usama, that they can read the Arabic, but we don't have access to the Arabic because we can't read it. So here it is in English. It's in English. Aren't you thankful and aren't you falling more in love with the Triune God, Father, Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, for making these sources available, accessible in English and for us to discover them? Who do you think is moving us to discover them? Who do you think led me to these sources? the almighty, beautiful spirit of the true father and true son so that we can destroy Islam, get Muslims saved, and inoculate Christians. This is all the more reason to praise him and love him and thank him. That God then raises up people. He says, Sam, you're going to devote yourself to ministry. You're going to do the homework. You're going to bless my church and get Muslims saved by the power of the Holy Spirit working through you. My honor. It is my honor and my duty to serve you, Lord. May I serve you with integrity. And never shame you. Okay. Now watch. Let's continue reading. So you don't, you don't think I'm making it up. I like this part. God has blessed you with a sharp mind. Thank the Lord you're a believer because with a time like that, you can destroy anyone. Never thought Allah had that much junk in the trunk. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's finish the citation. Let's finish the citation. Here it is. So grab the lower garment of the most merciful. He said, stop that. What do you want to expose my genitals? You're the only one who can see them. Stop yanking on my garment. Stop trying to pull it off. I don't want anyone else to see my genitals. It's only for you, baby. Ow, ow. Okay. My stand here, it replied, the womb replied, my stand here, is a stand of one seeking refuge in you from severance of ties. Allah said, would it not please you that I join whoever joins you and sever whoever severs you? It replied, she replied, yes, indeed. He said, you are granted that, but there's more. There's more. This, this garbage should make you appreciate your faith, your Bible more, your Bible supernatural. It's historically accurate, and it is the word of God. And make you love your church. Should make you love what God has given you even more. Here's the rest of it. Verily, the womb is attached to the throne. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> if someone tells you, does Allah have a sahaba, sahib, sahaba, a girlfriend? Yes. Here's the proof. Who's his girlfriend? The womb. Where is she? She's attached to the throne. Here it is. Verily, the womb is attached to the throne. Allah has a girlfriend. And why is she attached to the throne? Because that's where she yanks on Allah's gonads to give him pleasure. And connecting its ties does not mean dealing evenly with the kinsfolk. But it rather means that if one's kinsfolk kinsfolks sever the ties, he connects them. This hadith was also recorded by Al-Bukhari. Ahmed also recorded from Abdullah bin Amr that Allah's messenger said, the womb will be placed on the day of resurrection, curved like a spinning wheel. So it's going to show up. 
like a spinning wheel, speaking with an elo eloquent, fluent tongue, calling to severing whoever had severed it and joining whoever had joined it. Tell me this is not a stupid religion. <clears throat> the black stone will be given eyes and a tongue to speak. The Quran will appear as a pale man. Fasting will speak. Chapters of the Quran will appear as shades or clouds or flocks of birds. The womb will come speaking. It'll, it will be round, curved, like a spinning wheel. And the womb is attached to the throne. And the womb can stand up and reach out and grab Allah's gonads. This is Islam. Now you have the answer. Does Allah have a consort? Sahiba? Sahiba? Feminine form of <clears throat> Sahab? Yes. And who is his consort? The womb. Where is she? On the throne. Here it is again from Bukhari. Quoted in Ibn Kathir. You see it? See that? Am I lying? Muslims, come defend Allah's messenger. Come show me I'm a liar. I'm quoting Ibn Kathir. Tell me I'm misquoting it. It's in front of your eyes. Because you're cowards. You're only men when you gang up in droves, behead people, rape women, and slave children. That's the only time you're men. Because your prophet murdered anyone who exposed him because he knew he couldn't refute them. Time for you to leave Muhammad and come to Jesus, the eternal son of God. Okay? You got it? Okay, so we got that one? Okay. Now here's the one I like. Here's the one I like. Now let's have some fun. He's a grotesque, deformed-looking humanoid. And we got a lot more. So if you guys are not tired, I'm just beginning. This is from Sal Bukhari, Volume 9. Book 93, number 532S. And I give you the link where you can read it online. Narrated Abu Sayyid al-Khudri. Then the Almighty will come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw the first time. See, didn't I tell you Allah is a shapeshifter? He can change his shape. So he appears as a youth who's beardless. Then he appears as a woman who's veiled. Then he appears as a grotesque monster with two right hands and a left and a shin and a foot that he puts in hell with three eyes or more. Right? And was genitals. But I wonder when he changes into a woman, does he have now male genitals or is it now female genitals? And does the womb mind that her boyfriend turns into a girlfriend or is she okay that he's gender fluid and he is the original transgender? Okay. Then the Almighty will come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw the first time and he will say, I'm your Lord. And they will say, you're not our Lord, which is ironic. How the hell will they know that this isn't Allah if Muslims have never seen the shape of Allah? Believe that to Muhammad. Right? How do they know what Allah's shape is to know that this one is not Allah because his shape is different? Leave that to Muhammad. Now watch Muhammad's genius at work. And none will speak to him then, but the prophets, and then it will be said to them, do you know any sign by which you can recognize him? They will say the shin. How the hell do they know that... Allah will make himself known by his shin and what that shin looks like. Oh, wahi, brother. Allah revealed it to the prophets. Okay. And so then what will Allah do? So Allah will then uncover his shin. By their shins, you shall know them. Not by my shinny shin shin. Whereupon every believer will prostrate before him. And there will remain those who used to prostrate before him just for showing off and for gaining good reputation. Sal Bukhari, volume 9, book 93, number 532S. Okay, now, the prophets were given wahi, revelation. You will know me when I reveal to you my shin. But notice it says he'll uncover his shin. What does that mean? Let's see if you guys are reading attentively. If he uncovers his shin, that means Allah is covered. Well, what is he covered with? We read it. A waist sheet, a lower garment, an izar. You remember? The womb yanked on his lower garment, yanked on his 
way sheet and on his gonads. You remember that? Uncover the shin. So now let me play it out, guys. You ready? Let's play it out. Boy, the Muslims are going to love me. Hold on. Let's play it out. Hold on. May I not be a nuisance in my ears. Yeah, I don't think that. Watch here. Let's play it out, guys. Hold on. I'm not color co coordinated. All right, so let's do this. Here it is. So here it is. Imagine I'm Allah and I come in this shape. Hey, man, you don't look like Allah. Well, how the hell do you know Allah, what Allah looks like? Well, whatever it is, we don't know, but it's not you. All right. How are you going to know if I'm Allah? By your shin. Here you go. La, 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 la. Shinny, shin, shin. Hot mama. Here, one more time. Here, here, here. One more time, in case you didn't get it. Here you go. Here's my nice hairy shin. Hold on, hold on. Here you go. You like that? Oh, me like it. Oh, me like it a lot. I like it a lot. Oh, I like it a lot. Woo! Ow, ow! Yep, that's Allah, right? Okay, hold on. Let me not change it. That's Allah, all right. Ow! You smoking, Allah. You bald beast. Ow! All right. Now, here's my question. I've asked this question. I think I found an answer. And, oh, and by the way, if you go and watch the discussion I had, if you go and watch the discussion I had with that Muslim on Avery's channel, hey, Jordan, why are you saying I'm nuts? Just because I pretended to be Allah doesn't mean you can talk about my nuts, my gonads. Man, dude. Okay. Yep. Now, did you know earlier? Archive, can you confirm? Go watch it. The Muslim, the Muslim, I asked him the question. I go, when Allah uncovers his shin, I'm not lying. Go watch his reaction, what he says. I'm not exaggerating. I said, when Allah uncovers his shin, will it be hairy or hairless? You know what he said? He goes, I really don't know. <laughs> he seriously answered, I don't know. I go, so you don't know if it's going to have be hairless or hairy? He goes, no, I don't. So you still, is it possible his, his shin will be hairy? He goes, maybe. Allah knows. Well, am I lying? Go listen to it. And I said, buddy, and I even told him, I said, do yourself a favor. When this is done, I want you to go back. And by the way, answering Adventism, I haven't forgotten you. I promise you, God willing, sometime this month. So look for my <clears throat> reaching out to you on Skype. I told him honestly, I said, buddy, what I want you to do, I want you to go afterwards, watch this session, and pretend you're not a Muslim, watch it from a perspective of non-Muslim, and look at yourself and tell yourself if this is not a stupid be belief and how in the world can anyone believe it? I go, can you do that? Because right now, <clears throat> you are so shocked and overwhelmed and you're speaking as a Muslim. I want you to watch this, look at yourself and see it from a perspective of a non-Muslim and say to yourself, how the hell can anyone believe this? Who would be stupid enough to believe this? The fact that you have to even question and are doubtful whether Allah Shin will be hairy or hairless. Go watch it. His reaction. I'm not, I'm not kidding. This is why after he left, I told them, pray for him. This man is at the door to give his life to Jesus Christ. No lie. Okay. Now, I think I found, I think I found the answer that Allah, his shin will be hairless. You know what the proof is? I think I found the answer. I think I found the solution to the dilemma. If so, then that means Muslims must now recite a new shahada. La ilaha illallah, hasamu, sam shumun, Rasulullah. 
Ow! Life beater! Okay, now why? Why must they now proclaim me as a messenger after Muhammad? Because I think I was given wahi, inspiration, to find the answer to the dilemma. Is Allah shin, hairy, or hairless? And I'm convinced it's hairless. Do you know why? You guys ready? Here's the proof. You will hear Muslims, when they mention the name of Allah, they'll either say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified be him who's exalted, or they will say, Allah azwajal. Azwajal. Here, let me let me spell it out. Azwajal. Now, I finally figured out what Azwajal means. It means Allah as with gel. As with gel. This confirms Allah has heavenly gel, hair gel, that he uses to shave his body parts. I found the answer. I found the solution. I now realize the reason why they say Azwa Jal because that's Arabic for as with gel, short for as with hair gel. Allah as with gel. So Allah has heavenly gel that he uses to shave his body parts. I now figured out the answer, guys. I now, <laughs> because I thought you were serious. Who told you I'm not? Allah as with gel, i.e. Allah as with Gel, Allah and his gel, Allah with his gel. Why do you have gel, Allah? So that when I unveil my shin, it will be shiny. Now, do you use nair? What do you use? Or do you actually wax? Who wears short shorts? We wear short shorts. There you go. Okay, we ready for some more? Are you guys tired? That's right. You guys tired or are you ready for some more? Okay, let me show you Allah appearing as a young boy, beardless. Can I show you some more? Who wears short shorts? We wear short shorts. We wear such short. SG, I'm suspecting the gel wasn't created. Because if Allah has an eternal shin, he must have had an eternal supply of gel. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know if it's created. Unless Allah decided one day, hmm, you know what? Man, my shin is getting too hairy and it's itching and I can't stop scratching myself. Let me create some gel on the spot. So it's possible. I'm suspecting it's eternal because Allah always had a shin. So he always had a supply of gel. But it's also possible that Allah said, hey, man, you know what? This thing really itches me, man. Ow! Woo! Let me create some gel so I can shave. Okay? Who wears short shorts? Allah wears short shorts. But Allah, don't you wear a veil? Yeah, silly. I'm veiled so you don't see my shorts or my shinny shin shin. But the womb does. Right, baby? <whistles> you and me, girl. You and me. You my prima. Okay, carnalita. Oh, wait. I shouldn't be speaking Spanish. There's no Spanish in eternity. Oh, whatever. I'm alive. I can do what I want. You my mijita. Okay, carnalita. Oh! I'm your primo or your mijo. Okay. Okay, are we ready now? Are we ready for more? Because I want to talk about Allah appearing as a Beardless youth. <laughs> Noel, 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 Noel. It's in this article, but I'm going to give you another article as well. Okay. Allah appears, right? Youth without beard. He's a, And you know why that's bad? Here's this other article. It's in that article that I'm using, but here's another one that's on this topic. Okay. Here it is. What's the name of this article? Let's see. Muhammad's God, a young, curly-haired, beardless boy. A young, curly-haired, 
beardless boy. And by the way, these are the hadiths that Ahmed uses on TikTok. But have you, had you been searching on Answering Islam blog or AnsweringIslam.info, these hadiths were available for years for you to use. They were already there. Glory to Jesus that Ahmed is making it known to a wider audience on TikTok, but it was there for you to use so that you can do what he's doing on TikTok. And you don't have to know Arabic. It's there, translated by Muslims. Okay? Now, let's read. Oh, another thing. The, and here, you guys who were there at the stream, I showed him the hadith. I showed him the hadith. The Muslim on Avery channel that Allah appears as a young boy that's beardless with curly hair. And I asked him, isn't it sunnah? Isn't it sunnah to have a beard? Yeah. I go, so why is Allah not following the sunnah of Muhammad? Why is Allah not following the sunnah of Muhammad? Because it's sunnah to have a beard. But Allah decides to disobey his own sunnah that he gave to Muhammad and appear beardless. How come Allah doesn't follow the sunnah? He goes, I don't know. He's Go watch him. He's like seriously trying to answer me instead of saying, come on, man, this is stupid. Yeah, you remember how, how much? Yeah, go watch Avery's reaction. He tried to turn, but he laughed so hard we could hear him. I go, hey, dude, what are you doing? He's trying to hide himself from laughing, but you could hear him on the mic. Right? I go, how come he's not following the sunnah? The sunnah that your God gave to Muhammad is you got to have a beard. How dare he appear beardless? So Allah doesn't practice what he preaches? Yeah, and the guy was serious. See, you guys got him archived. Shamunian fan channel and archive make clips of my sessions on their channel. So support them and make them go viral for the glory of the Lord. You got to make clips out of that one. Okay. Now let's read it. This is online. Alim.org. It's a translation of a Tirmidhi. Here it is. It's in the article. So guys, I don't know what more I can do. I gave you articles with links where you can find them online so they can't accuse you of lying. Okay, here it is. Let's read. How does Muhammad's Lord appear? Okay. How does Muhammad's Lord appear? Let's read it. Here you go. At Tirmidhi, hadith number 237. Narrated Abdul Rahman ibn Aish. Allah's messenger said, I saw my Lord. Hope, pay attention. I saw my Lord, the exalted and glorious, in the most beautiful form, surah. He said, what do the angels and the presence of all, of Allah, I'm sorry, contend about? I said, thou art the most aware of it. He then placed his palm, palm, between my shoulders, and I felt, it's coldness in my chest. BB, try answering Islam.info. Go there now. It may work. Answering Islam.info or answering Islam.net and go to my blog. They shouldn't have blocked that. But anyway, thou art the most aware of it. He then placed his palm between my shoulders and I felt its coldness in my chest. So that's where Ahmed keeps telling the Muslims on TikTok. Allah's hand is cold. Why he make him? Why he make him Muhammad feel cold? Muhammad, peace be behind them. Peace be behind them. Dingy dingy. He's getting it from here, and it's online for free in English. So you don't need to read the Arabic. He then placed his palm between my shoulders, and I felt its coldness in my chest, and I came to know what was in the heavens and the earth. In other words, Allah made Muhammad omniscient. Because Muhammad became aware of everything in heaven and earth. Okay. He recited, thus did we show Ibrahim the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. And it was so that he might have certainty. Darimi reported in a mursal, meaning a disconnected form. And Tirmidhi also reported. But wait. Before they say, oh brother, this is a mursal. It's not connected. There's another one. Hold on. Dingy, dingy, man. We make a dingy, dingy. We got more, man. Dingy, dingy. Dingy, dingy, don't be clingy. Hey, Rahim, don't be clingy because you want dingy, dingy. I give you dingy, dingy if you stop clingy, clingy. Ouch, ouch. Man, I should have been a comedian and actor, dude. 
What the hell? How come Hollywood didn't discover me? Damn, I'm so funny. The second hadith, here's the grading. I'm going to now quote the second hadith. And there's the link. Translated by Ahmad Tirmidhi who said this is a Hassan Sahih. I'm going I'm to quote it now. Hassan Sahih Hadith. And I asked Muhammad Ibn Ismail about this Hadith and he said it is a Sahih Hadith. The one I'm about to quote. Okay. And it's from alim.org Hadith number 245. Now watch. Let's quote it. Man, why like the dingy dingy man? Why like this? Okay. Let's read it. Let's break it down into three because it's too long. Dingy dingy. And if you're a Mohammedan, if you're going to cuss, I'm going to insult. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, let's break it down three parts. It's too long. Allah's messenger was detained, right? And one morning from observing the dawn prayer, if you're a Muslim, you better be serious. If you're here, I saw your face. You're not as pretty as Aisha or the womb. So if you're in a mock, I'm going to insult you, buddy. So I hope you're going to be able to <clears throat> respond to these. Allah's messenger was detained one morning from observing the dawn prayer in congregation along with us till the sun had almost appeared on the horizon. He then came out hurriedly and <clears throat> iqama for prayer was observed. And he conducted it in brief form. When he had concluded the prayer by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa <clears throat> rahmatullah, he called out to us by saying, Remain in your places as you were. Now watch. Then turning to us, he said, I'm going to tell you what detained me from, <clears throat> from you, on account of which I could not join you in the prayer in the morning. I got up in the night and performed ablution and observed the prayer as had been ordained for me. Now watch this part. It's too long for me to quote all at once. Okay. So here you go. Let's break it down. The second part. Watch who he sees and how he sees him. And I haven't gotten to the beardless part right yet. But 404, it's not there, dude. Hold on. It's right here, dude. It works. Here. I just clicked on it and opened up. Here. There it is. There it is. I just opened it. Anyway. I dozed in my prayer till I was overcome by sleep. And lo, I found myself in the presence of my Lord, the blessed and the glorious, in the best form. He said, Muhammad, I said, at thy service, Labaik, <clears throat> my Lord. He said, what these highest angels contend about? I said, I do not know. He repeated it thrice, three times. He said, then I saw him put his palms, palms between my shoulder blades till I felt the coldness of his fingers. So Allah has palms, has fingers. He has a shin, he has a foot. He has genitals. All right, anyway. Till I, and he's got a hairy shin. Well, no, he shaves it. Till I felt the coldness of his fingers. His fingers were cold when it touched me between the two sides of my chest. Then everything was illuminated for me. And I could recognize everything. He said, Muhammad, I said, at thy service, my Lord. He said, what do these high angels contend about? I said, in regard to expiations, he said, what are these? So he saw it, palms, fingers, palms, fingers that were cold to the touch. Hold on, buddy. He said, the other one's not working. A lot of snack bar, a lot of snack bar. A lot of snack here. Z John Baditu Badidishu. If I don't get a donation to my ministry, I gotta block you because here it is, it works. Is that you just distracted me? They both work. So I better see a donation at the end of this month. And it, be, it better be five figures, cheapo. Here it is. And here's the link to my article. Mine doesn't work. These are the two different ones, John. John, I gave you the links to the two ones, but the one that's not the same one. Khali Orishu, Kachala. It's because you're 6'4. Doesn't mean Lemachnanu Khesai kick. These are the two links, John, to the two different ones. Cousin, you're gonna make me go back to Calvinism because you convinced me this was predestined. And you're lucky the womb 
made a covenant with Allah because the womb says, if I sever ties with you, John, because we're cousins, and if I disown you, then the womb is going to disown me and it'll make Allah punish me. This this month, huh? Five-figure donation in Panabaru. Okay. So there you go. You're lucky I'm scared of that womb, John. Because she may grab my gonads like she did Allah. Hey, come here. Oh, what? How dare you break ties with John Badadishu? Yeah, but I didn't choose him to be my cousin. So what? Oh, Allah, tell your girlfriend. She's committing zinna, Allah. Zinna. All right. So we got it. Now let me give you the Daru Salam version of this. The Daru Salam, which is on sunnah.com. Here's their version. Okay. Here it is. Daru Salam. Dami Tirmidhi. Here's their version, guys. This is it. Two different English versions of this hadith. Michael Law, good to see you, brother. Rob, Robert Mitchell. Here it is. Two different versions of this hadith. Daru Salam Salafi, and the other one is alam.org. There it goes. Right there. It's in my article. Now let's just quote the relevant part. I don't want to quote all of it. Okay? Because it's too long, and the rest of the part is irrelevant. So here it is. Here's the particular section. I don't know who Mason is. If he's a distraction, then we block him. Okay, well, Mason, you got to wait, buddy. Wait. We got good news. This troll now became orthodox. He's, he's a catechumen. He's coming to the fullness of the truth. Okay, let's read, guys. Then I saw my Lord, blessed and most high, in the best of appearances. He said, oh, Muhammad. I said, my Lord, here I am, my Lord. He said, what is that? What is it that the most exalted group busy themselves with? I said, I do not know, Lord. He said it three times and said, ask me that three times. He said, so I saw him, I saw him place his palm between my shoulders and I sense the coolness of his fingertips between my breast. Okay, where's the hadith? Watch here. And what's the grading? Here it is on sunnah.com, their version. Sunnah.com, here's their version. And what's the grading? All right, here's the grading. There you go. Here's the grading of it. Here you go. Hassan. Alam.org says Hassan Sahih. It's not just Hassan good, it's also Sahih. Hassan. Okay, well, John, do me a favor. Come back later uh, because right now I'm not taking Christians. No, it's a Christian in the background. So come back later. Do you guys got it? Alam.org gives you the complete chain grading hassan sahih it's good and sound this one says hassan okay so we got it right have i established allah appears as a man allah appeared as a man with hands and fingers that were cold to touch and he touched muhammad physically well where is the beardless allah i'm glad you asked here's the beardless allah and all of these I got from the book by Holtzman. I quoted from her book because she translated from Arabic in English in her book. And I then quoted it because they're in Arabic, but she translated them. So I gave you her translation and where she's getting it from. Here you go. I saw my Lord in the most beautiful form, like a youth with abundant hair. And where did she get this from? al darqutni And you should know that name. Ahmed, when he quotes... He quotes his book. This is the book Ahmed is always quoting. Pay attention. He'll say, al darqutni Kitab Al-Ru'ya. This is the book he was quoting. This is the book this female scholar of Islam translated, which I got from her book. Okay? Hadith number 332, 333, 356, 357. Similar reports from Um Al-Tufail, Anas bin Malik, Muad bin Afran. Ibn Um, Ibn Umar, Aisha. Look at how many people narrated this. Aisha, Ibn Abbas, reported by Tabrani, Ibn Abi Asim, Al Bayhaqi, Al Suyri, Al Haythami, Ibn Adi, Al Baghdadi. But you see how many of Muhammad's companions 
narrated Aisha, Ibn Abbas, right? And their followers. Muad bin Afra, Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar, the son of Umar, right? Anas bin Malik. Okay, now here's the one. Here's the granddaddy of them all. Here it is, folks. We are the champions, my friends. Here you go. Here you go, guys. Here's where Allah appears beardless. Beardless. I saw my Lord in the form of a young man, beardless, Amrad, with short curly hair, Jad, and clothed in a red garment. Now, is this Daif, weak? Is it Maudu, forged, or is it Sahih? Narrated by Ahmad bin Hanbal in Tabarani, authenticated by Ahmad ibn Hanbal, authentic, it's not forged, it's authentic by Ahmad ibn Hanbal in Creed, that's the name of the book, citing Isnad, and here's the long Isnad, Abdullah Samad bin Yahya in Tab Tabakat al Hanabila, Hanbali, volume 1, page 218, al Marudi in Tabakat, volume 3, page 81, Ibn Aqil in Maqdisi, Ibn Aqil. Aqal Aqil, Ibn Adi Al Qatan, Al Kamil, Fi Duwaffa, Al Rijal. I guess there's a typo here. Darn it. Lord, help me remember these typos. Ya Alam Sheikh, I gotta remember. Okay. And then Al Darqutni, Kitab Al Ru'ya. There's Darqutni again. But now watch the grading. Sahih, Sahih by Abu Al Hassan bin Bashar. Sahih, sound. In Ibn Abi Yala Tabakat, Volume 2 or Book 2, page 59, Abu Yala al Mutammad, and then notice who accepts it. Accepted by Ibn Taymiyyah in Bayan Tablis al Jahmiyyah. They can't lie to you guys. They can't say it's Daif, Maudu, Sahih, Hassan. Allah appears in a red garment. Curly, short hair, beardless. You guys getting it? So did we establish that? We established it, right? I can move on to other things. You guys getting bored or are you following me? Is this still exciting you? You still want me to continue because it's got a lot more, but it's up to you. This is for you. I'm doing it for you guys. If the trolls bark, muzzle them, let them come on StreamYard. Don't let them get away in the comment section. Okay, let them come, customer. Come, customer. Don't go off topic or I'm going to punish Muhammad. Come. There's the link, StreamYard. All right. Let's see if you have a customer. All right, but let me just remind myself. Okay, I got to do this. So not. Yeah, I got to remember. Please, Father, please, Lord Jesus. Oh God, please, Holy Spirit. I just got to do something. I got to remind myself. I got to find this. Good job. Okay. okay. Let me do this. So come come on in, Mohammedans. Come defend your God. Don't be scared. Okay, we got a few more, and we're going to wrap it up. We have no customers. Now you got all the information. You got all the articles. What more can I do? Any customers? Okay, none. All right, let's go back. Let's go back here to Allah's other body parts. Other body parts. Okay. So we established shin, foot, hands, fingers, palms, genitals, gonad, loins, lower garment, waist sheet, azar. So we've established that, right? Let's see what else we can establish. And I'll tell you how tall Allah is, by the way. How tall Allah is. This is from this article again. You know that Allah's shape is 90 feet tall. He's 90 feet tall. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute. All right. And in case, yeah. Let me get you this again. In case you missed it, you guys may say, all right, well, you know what, Sam? I don't think Allah has... Gonads, let me let's quote it one more time. 
genitals. I don't think he has them. Okay, one more time, just so you don't think I'm lying. Here it is. Abu Hurairah narrated on the authority of the Prophet, when God had completed creation, the Rahim stood up and seized the loin of the merciful, Hakwi, Hakwa. Akhadat, Akhadat, be Hakwi al Rahman. He said to her, Stop it. So there you go, in case you thought I was lying. All right. And I told you that Allah wears a garment. What else does Allah have? Okay. Allah has two right hands and a left one. So he's got three hands. Here it is Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. We're almost done. We have no customers and we're going to show you. Abdullah bin Umar reported Allah's messenger saying, Allah the exalted and glorious would fold the heavens on the day of judgment and then he'd place them on his right hand and say, I am the Lord. Where are the haughty and where are the proud today? He would fold the earth, placing it on the left hand. Oh, wait, right and left? Right and left? In Allah's right hand, Allah's left hand? And say, I am the Lord. Where are the haughty where, and where are the proud today? And where does this come from? Sahih Muslim, book 39, number 6704. But wait. Here it says right and left. But here in Sunan Nisai, Sunan Nisai, he's got two right hands. And the grade is Sahih. Sunan Nisai, Nisai. Here it is. Sunan Nisai. Here it says he's got two right hands. Let's quote it, and we're going to show you the grading. Here it goes. So does he have a right hand, a left hand? Does he have two right hands? Or does he have two right hands and a left? Okay. Book 49, the book of the etiquettes, etiquette of judgment, chapter 1, virtue of the judge who is just in passing judgment. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, by the way, if you don't know what al-ass is in English, al-ass means the ass. Amr bin the ass. Amr, the son of the ass. And I'm going to show you Allah making the throne squeak. Guys, do not let me leave without quoting the hadith where Allah makes the throne squeak by his weight. So here, al-ass, Amr, son of the ass. So Amr, son of the ass, said, the prophet said, those who are just, and fair will be with Allah Most High on thrones of light at the right hand of the Most Merciful, those who are just in their rulings and in their dealings with their families and those of whom they are in charge. Muhammad, one of the narrators, said in his hadith, and both of his hands are right hands. Both of his hands are right hands. Okay, what's the grading? What's the grading of this? Here you go. And I gave you the link to sunnah.com. What's the grading? Here you go. Is the grading modu, daif, grade, sahih. Sahih. Sunan Nasai, 5379. In book reference, book 49, hadith 1. English translation, volume 6, book, book 49, hadith 5381. Is there another narration? That says something similar? Yep. Okay. Well, these ones talk about his hand and right hand. But here's one that's going to make you laugh. Ready to laugh? Now, it is da'if. Da'if. But remember what da'if means. Da'if means weak, but it passed. That's why it's not rejected. Weak, but it passed, so they couldn't reject it. Weak means that it has a very strong possibility. It's authentic, but we don't use it for ruling. We can use it for exhortation. Okay? This is from Sunan Ibn Majah. Volume 1, Book 1, Hadith 104. You guys want to get ready to laugh? The Book of the Sunnah. Chapter 11, B, The Virtue of Umar. What makes Umar so great? You want to laugh? You guys ready? It was narrated that Ubay bin Kaab said, the Messenger of Allah said, the first person with whom Allah will shake hands will be with Umar. Say what? Allah shakes hands? Hey, how do you do? Congratulations, nice to meet you. But wait, it's two right hands though. 
Okay? The first person with Allah will shake hands will be Umar. And he's the first person to be greeted with the salam. And the first person will be taken by the hand and admitted into the paradise. Well, that's going to be a weird sight. Why? Two right hands. So, right? So, here, two right hands. So, one hand will be up, one hand will be down. Hey, Umar, how are you? Or maybe with this other right hand, he's going to be comforting the womb. There, there. Umar, how are you? Here, let me show you. Let's, let's try to play it out. Let's try to figure this out. Let's try to figure out the scene, right? Two right hands. This hand. Yep. Come on, man. You got to get in the gym. Here's the right hand. It's now there, there, Rahim. Later. Later. Hey, Umar. How are you, buddy? Hi, Allah. Here, let me extend the hand. Here you go. How are you? Here you go. How are you? How are you? I can't even, I can't even try to mimic it. So Allah shakes people's hands. <laughs> and they make fun of the incarnation. That Jesus Christ is God. And by the way, did you know that the Hadith also say Allah laughs, he laughs, he mocks people, and he rejoices, he gets elated? Here it is, Sunan Ibn Majah, Volume 5, Book 37, Hadith 4247. Here is the link. Okay, you, you better believe it's awkward. Awkward! Here it is, the link. It's in my article. But let's quote the Hadith, shall we? Ibn Majah, here it is. Allah rejoices. Here you go. <gasps> Hadith number 4247. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Allah rejoices. Ooh, wow. Oh boy, Umar. Here, let me shake your hand. Ooh, you made me so giddy. It was narrated from Abu Huraira. That the Prophet said, Allah rejoices more over the repentance of any one of you than you rejoice over your lost animal when you find it. Boy, does that sound familiar? Hmm. Where do we find something similar? Oh, Luke 15, 7 and 10, where Jesus says, they'll be rejoicing in heaven in the presence of angels over one sinner that repents. Gee, I wonder where Muhammad got the saying from. Hmm. All right, hold on. Here's another one. You don't think Allah laughs? Here you go. Ibn Majah, Hassan, Hassan Hadith. Here you go. Ibn Majah, Hassan Hadith. It's Hassan. Sunan Ibn Majah, Ibn Majah, Volume 1, Book 1, Hadith. 181 from Sunnah.com. I link to it. The Book of the Sunnah, Chapter 13, concerning what the Jahmiyyah denied, i.e. seeing Allah in the hereafter. So what does it say? Here you go. Step and step and step and step and step. Take a bow with. All right, here you go. Watch here. Sunan Ibn Majah, the book of the Sunnah. Waqi bin Hudus narrated that his paternal uncle, paternal uncle, sorry, his paternal uncle, Abu Razin said, the messenger of Allah said, Allah laughs. <laughs> oh, wow, you made me so giddy. <laughs> Allah laughs at the despair of his slaves, although he soon changes it. I said, oh, messenger. See, now again, hope. If they tell it's metaphorical, take camel urine and spread it all over their face. Because the Muslim is shocked. Does the Lord laugh? See? Now, Mama could say, no, that's a metaphor. He said, yes. Did you see that hope? If they tell you, no, this is a metaphor. The Hadith, the man is asking, wait, wait, wait. Allah laughs? And the Muhammad say, no, stupid. This is a metaphor. Yes, he does laugh. And then watch. I said, we shall never be deprived of good by a Lord who laughs. Hassan. Wow, so Allah laughs? Then you know what? If this is a laughing God, a mocking God, a God who rejoices, then we'll never lose hope that maybe he's just having a good joke at our expense, just having fun with us, to torment us, only then to reward us.
Okay? Wait, but does Allah mock people? Yes, he does. Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. Here you go. Let me get you the link. Allah even mocks people. He laughs at them and mocks them. And then one guy says, Allah, are you mocking me? Can you imagine? The hadith that Muhammad says, the man's going to say, Allah, are you making fun of me? Are you mocking me? And Allah laughs. <laughs> I'm just having a little fun, man. Don't take it serious. Ow! Stop it! I was just joking with him, Rahim. Stop yanking my nuts. Damn. Here it is. Here it goes. Sai Muslim. Book one. Number 349. Here you go. Watch here. He would continue calling upon Allah till Allah blessed and exalted would laugh. When Allah would laugh at him, he would say, enter the paradise. So Allah laughs at him. But now notice this other version. Sai Muslim. Book one, number 359. Watch what the guy says. Watch. It's not me. These are the hadiths. Okay. Watch here. Th see if I'm lying. Watch here. We're waiting for it to show up before the rapture. Yeah, I don't see the Bible says. Why is it not showing up? It's taking a while. Come on, man. Here you go. He, the narrator, said, he, the man would say, art thou making a fun of me? Allah, are you making fun of me? Or art thou laughing at me? Thou, though art the king, you the king are laughing at me, making fun of me? He, the narrator, said, I saw the messenger of Allah laugh till his front teeth were visible. Now tell me Muhammad is not loony tunes. Muhammad is telling them, this is what's going to happen on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, Allah is going to make fun of someone and the man's going to say, hey Allah, are you making fun of me? You laughing at me? You make fun of me? You're the king? A situation that hasn't happened, but Muhammad imagined it, thinking he's a prophet, is going to happen, and he starts laughing at it. <laughs> Boy, why Allah is so funny. Why are you laughing, messenger? Because I just saw the future. A man's going to come to Allah. Allah's going to be making fun of him, laughing at him. And the man's going to say, you're making fun of me, Allah? You're laughing at me? You're the king. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Muhammad. That hasn't happened yet. What the hell are you laughing at? No, stupid. Gabriel revealed to me this is what's going to happen. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet, idiot. Allah revealed to me what's going to happen on the day of judgment. Don't you believe in prophets that have visions of the future? Yeah, but you're not one of them, Momo. I say no, no to Momo. And that womb is clingy because she wants dingy, dingy. Here's one more. Okay, here it is. Sai Muslim, book one, number 361. Okay. Number 361. Man, this Allah be tripping, right? You be tripping. Here you go. Oh, my Lord, thou mocking at me, though thou art the Lord of the worlds? Ibn Masood laughed <laughs> and asked the hearers, why don't you ask me what I'm laughing at? They then said, why do you laugh? He said, it is in this way that the messenger of Allah laughed. So when Allah told me, Muhammad told me the story, he laughed. Now I'm telling you, sir, I'm laughing. Because he laughed at Allah laughing and making fun of someone. So I'm laughing at the fact that Muhammad laughed, that Allah laughed and made fun of someone. They, the commands of the prophet, asked, why do you laugh, messenger of Allah? He said, on account of the laugh of the Lord of the worlds, the universe, the worlds. When he, the desire of paradise, said, Thou mocking at me, though thou art the Lord of the worlds? He would say, I am not mocking at you, but I have power to do what I will. So he even lied. No, I'm not making, mocking at you. Then why the hell are you laughing? Oh, Allah told the boo-boo. Allah told the boo-boo. Allah be fibbing. If you are not mocking at me, why are you laughing at me, Allah? Oh, but Allah is khaylul makaneen, the greatest of deceivers. He can lie to you. I wasn't making fun of you. Jibreel. Jibreel. Shut up. Rahim. If you tell him I was making fun of him, no dingy dingy, and you won't be clingy clingy. So we get it? If after this you still believe, you still believe Islam is true, you really are seriously demonized. Now watch here. 
Does the throne of Allah squeak? Does it make noise? Let me see if I can find on sunnah.com. It should be there. Okay, let me just find it on sunnah.com. So I want you to see it with your own eyes. Because I have it. I quoted from the hard copy in Mishkat al-Masabi. But I'm sure it's here. Yep, it's here. There you go. Glory to Jesus Christ. Here it is. Here it is, the online ver version. It gives me more than one version. It gives me Sunan Abi Dawood, Da'if. So here it is, one version of it, Sunan Abi Dawood. I had the Mishkat al-Masabi version. Here it is, right there. So this version is Da'if by Al-Albani, Book 41, Hadith 4708. Okay. Now let me find the one Mishkat al-Masabi. It should be here. It's got to be here. Unless they didn't translate it correctly. Okay, well that version is not there. But I gave you the one from Sunan Abu Dawood. So I I'm surprised. Now I'm giving you the hard copy of Mishkat al-Masabi. It should be on Sunan.com, but I have to search for it. So here it is. And I gave you the one from Sunan Abu Dawood. Click on it. Same hadith. So I'm quoting now the hard copy of Mishkat al -Masabi, English translation with explanatory notes by Dr. James Robson, Sheikh Mohammed Ashraf Publishers, Booksellers and Exporters, Lahore, Pakistan, reprinted 1994, Volume 2, Book 26, Fatan, Chapter 17, The Beginning of Creation and Mention of the Prophets, pages 1226-1227. Does the throne shake from Allah's ars, from the weight of his ars? Okay, let's see if I'm lying. Okay, and then I'm going to give you from Ibn Kathir's El Bidaya Wal Nihaya. Okay, here you go, guys. Let's read. Jabir bin Muttim told that a nomadic Arab came to God's messenger and said, People are suffering distress. The children are hungry, the crops are withered, and the animals are perishing. So ask God, ask God to grant us rain, for we seek you as our intercessor with God, and God is our intercessor with you. So we ask God to intercede with you as you intercede with God. Now, Muhammad Flip, God intercede for you by interceding with me? What are you nuts? Look what he says. Thereupon the prophet said, glory be to God, glory be to God, and continued and he continued declaring God's glory till the effects of that was apparent on the faces of his companions. He then said, God's state is greater than that. God doesn't intercede with anyone. Woe to you. Do you know how, God, how great God is? Look at how great God is. His throne is above the heavens. Okay. Indicating with his fingers something like a dome over him. And it groans. The throne groans, squeaks. On account of him, as a saddle does because of the writer. Abu Dawood transmitted it. Did you catch it? Allah is so great that because of his huge ars, his huge ass, the throne groans. It squeaks and groans from how heavy his ass is that sits on it. You caught it? You catch it? I didn't make it up. And it's all in this article. It's all in this article, right here. Let me give you the article again. Now let me get you the book of Ibn Kathir so you can see the hard copy. As I now read from this hard copy, watch here. Let's get it. Volume 1, I have it in one of my articles, but I want you to see the hard copy because I have it. Allah's Arsh squeaks and shakes. Page 51. Here it is. And again, I want to take the moment one more time. I really mean it from my heart. And I know it's the Holy Spirit putting in your heart. I want to thank the Lord Jesus for putting in your heart and thank you for being regular financial supporters to the ministry so I can do it full time. On PayPal and Patreon, you know who you are. Your are with the Lord and I thank the Lord for you. I don't take it for granted because you don't need me. Lord doesn't need me. But the Lord being pleased to use me has moved your heart to do so because if it wasn't for your support, I couldn't get these books. I had to get the multi-set expensive and spend hours studying and researching. May the Lord Jesus bless you.
and giving support and made this support stay steady because I do this full time for the glory of Christ. If he wants me to do something else, his will be done. Here it is. Okay. El Bidaya Wan Nihaya from the beginning to the end, volume one, the story of creation, Ummas of the past, the life of Muhammad up to 9 AH, Ibn Kathir at the Mashqi, 700, 774 AH after Hijra, Darul Ishat, Karachi, Pakistan. Page 51. Allah's Arsh. Does it squeak? Here it is. I'll let you see with your own eyes. Thank you, my brothers. May I serve you with integrity and holiness out of love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay, here it goes. Right here, page 51. I even have it underlined. And we're done. We had no customers. You see it underlined right here, this page? Page 51. Okay? So let me read. You ready? You ready? Very important work. Okay. So I'm going to skip to the part. It's the same hadith, but I'm going to skip to the part where Muhammad got angry. Woe to you. Allah is not sought as an intercessor for anyone of his creatures. His state is greater than that. Woe to you. Do you realize what mighty Allah is? His arsh. Is it a coincidence that the word arsh sounds like ars, which is the word ass? His arsh. His ars, ass, his arsh, right? Is over his heavens like this, and he showed with his fingers something like a dome, and it squeaks, squeaks because of him, like the squeaking of a saddle because of the writer. I have it underlined. Squeaks. See it? All right, let me read the next hadith. Ibn Bashar, narrated in this hadith, surely, surely, Allah is above his heavens and narrated the hadith to the end. However, Ibn Asakir, Asakir has composed a booklet rejecting this hadith and questioned Muhammad Ibn Ishaq for narrating it. So one guy rejected this, but now watch. But these words, these words, in case you want to reject it, Muslims, are narrated also through other lines of transmission and cited by Abu Ibn Humayyad and Ibn Jarir in their tafsirs and Ibn Abu Asim and Tabarani in their books on the Sunnah. You can't reject them, buddy. They've been accepted by various scholars and their various cha cha chains of transmission. You're stuck with it. PayPal or Patreon. PayPal for one time. You can use that regularly or Patreon if you want to do it monthly. Okay, now watch. Okay. And their books in a bazaar in his musnad and hafiz diya muqadisi and muqtar translated, transmitted it, narrated from Umar ibn Khattab that a woman came to the prophet and requested him to pray to Allah that he admit her to paradise. He extolled Allah and said, his kursi chair extends over the heavens and the earth and it squeaks as squeaks the new saddle under the weight of the rider. Right here. Okay. Right here. Look at my finger. Right there. So Allah's throne squeaks like the saddle squeaks from the ass, the weight of the rider of a horse. You caught it? Hope you see it. It's literal physical however there is doubt on the reliability of a sub narrator but that not doubt where you rejected finally another one the prophet muhammad said when you ask allah for paradise ask him for the firdos for it is the highest of paradise and its center and above it is the throne of ar rahman according to some athar the people of the firdos will hear the squeak of the arsh Squeak of the arsh. See? Underline. Okay? Squeak of the arsh. Throne. That 
will be it's glorifying and extolling Allah. So do you see why the the throne squeaks? The throne squeaks is the way that it praises Allah. So when it's squeaking, squeak, squeak, it's actually saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Okay, now let me finish this part. They will hear it because of their nearness to it. The Prophet Muhammad said, the throne of Ar-Rahman shook on the death of Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. When Sa'd ibn Mu'ad died, his throne shook because Allah shook it. See? All right. Page 51. So you caught it? Now let's end it with how tall Allah is. The height of Allah. Let me get you the articles on that one. The Hadith say, and this is where you'll find Ahmed mentioning it, but there's a version of the Hadith that says, Adam was created in the image of Ar-Rahman. Okay. Let me get it for you. And let me find it. I have to find it first. Here you go. Here's the article. Here it is. This is just one. Now in each article I give you, there'll be links to other articles. So here it is. Here it is. And the name of the article is, Is Jesus really like Adam after all? Revisiting the problem of the Quran's likeness to Jesus. So here you go. Because what Muslims will tell you, what Muslims will tell you, is that when the Hadith say Allah created Adam in his own shape of 60 cubits, they'll say that means Allah created Adam after Adam's shape, which makes no sense, as even Ahmed nails him on it. Wait, how can Allah create Adam in the shape of Adam? Is there two Adams? No, Allah created Adam in the shape of Allah, 60 cubits. And here's the proof. Here you go. Let me quote it for you. You ready? Here you go. Let me quote it for you. Now, this poses a problem. This poses a problem, folks. Let's read. Likewise, we affirm that Allah created Adam in his image. This hadith was collected by Ahmed bin Hanbal and others. In another narration, in the image of Ar-Rahman. See, there you can't get away from it. If anyone says, when it says Allah created Adam in his image, the pronoun his means Adam's own image, lie. Allah created Adam in, Adam, in Allah's image. Allah created Adam in Allah's image because there's another version of the Hadith where it says Adam was created in the image of Ar-Rahman, in the image of the merciful. And who collected it? As collected by Ad-Darqutni, Abu Bakr, and Najid, Abu Abdullah bin Bata, and others. Kitab al-Itiqad by Imam Abu Hussein, Muhammad bin al-Qadi, Abu Yala al-Fara al-Hanbali. Verification of the text and commentary by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdurrahman al khumais Associate Professor at Muhammad bin Saud University, Saud. University translated by Amr bin Jalal Abu Rub, Medina Publishers and Distributors, first edition, 2012, pages 21 to 22. Did you catch it? Hope, everyone. Adam was created in the image of Ar Rahman, in the shape of Ar Rahman. But we got a problem, folks. We got a problem. Before I show you the problem, look what Ibn Taymiyyah says about this hadith. Look what Ibn Taymiyyah says about this hadith. We got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah said, there was no dispute. No one disagreed among the Salaf in the first three generations. Now watch what this means. Muhammad and his companions, their followers, and the followers after them, Salaf al-Saleh, none of them disputed that the pronoun is reference to Allah. That Adam was created in the image of Allah. Not after Adam's own image, which makes no sense. As has been elaborated in many different ways, 
from the Sahaba. Sahaba means the companions of Muhammad. And the context of all the ahadith point to that. Bayan Talbis al Jahmiya ibn Taymiyyah with ver ver verification by Dr. Abdul Rahman al Yahya. Ahl al Sunnah, the people of the Sunnah, affirm Allah's attribute of having an image. Did you guys catch it? If you are Ahl al Sunnah wa Jama, the people of the Sunnah, the Sunnis, who follow the Salaf al Salih, the first three generations of Muslims, Muhammad's followers, their followers, and their followers, you must affirm Allah has a surah, an image, a form, a shape, even though it's unlike anything in creation. Okay, follow with me. Okay, let's read the rest of it. They profess it, they profess that it should be accepted as is without denying, altering, or describing it and without likening it to his creation. El Ajuri said, after narrating the hadith of the image, this is from the traditions that Muslims are obligated to believe in without saying how or why. Rather, it is accepted with submission and belief and that it is true. You better believe it's true. And by refraining from trying to explain it. We don't say how. We say it's real. We don't know. Boy, that sure sounds like Christians say when we say there's nothing like the Trinity, we can't comprehend it. And they mock us for it. As has been said by the Muslim Imams who passed. As Sharia by Al Ajuri, book two, page 106. Did you guys catch it? Do you catch it? Focus, listen, guys. Here is the final part of this. And then we're going to wrap up with some points because no Muslim was man enough like Aisha was to refute me. Let's read. It's all in that article. I'm going to share the link again. Imam Ahmed, this is Ahmed ibn Hanbal, spoke on this topic and said about the hadith of the image. We accept the hadith as is without explaining its essence. Because of that, Imam Ahmed used to rebuke. Are you listening to his hope? Im Ahmed Ibn Hanbal, a Hadith scholar and collector who has a school of Islamic jurisprudence, Madhab named after him, Hanbali, would rebuke those, rebuke those who interpret the Hadith of the image and who ascribe the pronoun to other than Allah. So if they tell you his image means Adam's image, he would rebuke them. He said in the narration of Abu Talib, whoever says that Allah created Adam in Adam's shape is a jahmi. Because what shape did Adam have before he's created? Idiots. Ibdat al-Tawilat. This is a warning from Imam Ahmed. That whoever interprets the pronoun to be other than referring to Allah will have followed the path of the jahmiyyah Ibn Qutayba said, as I see it, and Allah knows best, is that to have an image is not stronger than having two hands, fingers and eyes, which Allah has. But these attributes are familiar because they were mentioned in the Quran. So the Quran mentions Allah's fingers, Allah's eyes, Allah's hands. Unlike the image, which is unfamiliar, the Quran doesn't mention Allah's image, that's in the Sunnah. Because it was not mentioned in the Quran, but only mentioned in the Ahadith. However, we believe in both Types of report, unlike ultimate fart, who only accepts the Quran. We do not, let me quote the rest of it. We do not, okay, you do not what? <clears throat> One second. We do not ascribe any specific essence or resemblance to these attributes. So you guys catching it? True Sunni Muslims. Affirm Allah has a shape, a surah, a form, an image, even though it's unlike anything in creation. And Adam was created after Allah's shape and image. We do not deny it and we don't explain it because it's something beyond comprehension. We don't know what that image is like. It's unlike anything, but hold on, I'm confused. Ta'wil Mukhtalif al Hadith, page 261. I'm really confused though. Now let me get you the end notes before I go on. Here are the end notes. 
Okay, just to show you. Because I want to now add some confusion. You guys, did you enjoy this, by the way? Was it a blessing? Here are the end notes provided by the source. Footnote 22. Also collected this hadith that Adam was created in the image of Allah, in the image of the merciful, by Ibn Abi Asim. Ibn Abi Asim. Son of the father who, of awesome. The dude is awesome. That's me. As-Sunnah, book 2, 229. Al-Bayhaqi in Al-Asma wa as sifat page 37. Now, you should know these books. These are the books that Ahmad has in Arabic, and he mentions them. And I'm give, giving you a source that translated them in English. Okay? Ibn Khuzayma, at tawheed Hadith number 41, book 1, page 85. al Ajuri in a Sharia, page 315. Ibn Hajar said in Al Fat, Fat al Bari, commentary on Bukhari, volume 5, page 183. Al Maziri and those who followed him have rejected the authenticity of this edition, meaning on the image of Ar Ar Rahman. Some have rejected this image of Ar Rahman since what has been established in most of the hadith, chains of transmission is. Allah created Adam in a shape. Then he said, if it is authentic, then it is taken in a way that befits Allah's majesty. Okay? A few more references. And get ready for the conclusion. Now here he quotes the rest of Ibn Hajar. Okay, what do you say, Ibn Hajar, to those who reject this version that says, in the image of Ar-Rahman? So here's what Ibn Hajar says. Ibn Hajar continued by saying, I say... The addition, this wording, Adam created in the image of Ar-Rahman, was collected by Ibn Abi Asim, awesome, and As-Sunnah, as well as At-Tabrani, with a chain of narration leading through Ibn Omar, that's the son of Omar, both of whom are companions of Muhammad, and the narrators are all trustworthy. Bam! No, this addition is sound, narrated by trustworthy men. Going back to Ibn Umar, the son of Umar, both of whom knew Muhammad. Ibn Abi Asim also collected it using the chain of narration passing through Abu, Abu Yunus from Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira, the commander of Muhammad, with a wording which refutes Al-Mazidi's opinion that the word Ar-Rahman is not established. You're wrong because Abu Huraira cited it that way. In the hadith, it says whoever fights should avoid hitting the face because man's image in Ar-Rahman's image. Ishaq al-Kawzaj said, I heard Ahmed say, this hadith is authentic. Authentic. My father said, such a person has lied. And this is the exact statement that the Jahmiya said. Al-Fat, volume 5, page 183. So if you say that this version that Adam was created in the image of Ar-Rahman is not authentic. You're a liar. You're a liar. Liar, liar, panther, fire. Fire. So we got it? But now we have a problem. We got a problem, guys. We got a problem. And here are other chains. Let me just give you all of it so you can see how many people narrated this. Footnote or endnote 23. All in my article. I'm going to give you the link one more time so you don't lose this stuff. He is the Imam, the Hadith scholar, the jurist, the Mufti, the Sheikh of Iraq, Abu Bakr, Ahmed bin Salman, bin Al Hassan, bin Israel, Al Baghdadi, Al Hanbali, Al Najid, the man who narrated this Hadith. This is the man. He was born in 253 Hijri and died in the year 348 Hijri, referred to as Siyar, volume or book 15, page 502, and Mukhtasar as Siyar. Volume 2 or Book 2, page 125, number 3158. Final note. And I'll give you the article again. And now watch the confusion. Watch the confusion. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed serving you. Thank you, guys. God has blessed us in His mercy. We're getting over 400 strong, and we still stay over 300. Thank you, Father, Son, and Spirit, for your glory, not for my praise. May the numbers increase so they can learn this for your glory. And keep us humble and teachable. Here's the end note, footnote 24. He is the imam, the role model, the worshiper of Allah, the hadith scholar, the sheikh of Iraq, Abu Abdullah, Ubaidullah, bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Hamdan, al-Akbari, al-Hanbali, 
also known to us as Ibn Bata. He died the year 387 Hijri, referred to Siarul Alam and Nubala. Nubala'a. Nubala'a. Oh, my list. Book, volume 16, page 529, number 389. And there are the sources, and here's the article. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the article again. I don't know what more I can do for you. Articles, rebuttals. The quotes are there, authentic, verified, accurately cited, and these sessions. Here's the problem. Okay? It says, Allah created Adam in the image of Arachman after his shape of 60 cubits. 60 cubits is 90 feet tall. Let me get you the hadith so you don't think I'm lying. Sunnah.com. Now, guys, you know what that means? If Adam was created after the shape of Allah, a shape which is 60 cubits tall, 90 feet tall, you know what you just said? Allah's physical or material spatial body is 90 feet tall. Here it is. Sahil Bukhari. So we're even told this wicked cat. We're even told how large Allah's shape is. Here it is. Sal Bukhari, volume 4, book 55, hadith 543. 543, sunnah.com, right there. Thank you, Elvis. Stop shaking the pelvis. Narrated Abu Huraira. The prophet said, Allah created Adam, making him 60 cubits tall. When he created him, he said to him, go and greet the gr that group of angels and listen to their reply. For it be your greeting, salutation, and the greeting, salutations of your offspring. I'm going to give you another hadith. So Adam said to the angels, "Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. The angel said, "Assalamu alaika wa rahmatullahi, peace and Allah's mercies be upon you. Thus the angels added to Adam's salutation the expression, wa rahmatullahi. Any person who will enter paradise will resemble Adam in appearance and figure. So according to Islam, if you enter paradise, you're going to be 90 feet tall again. In appearance and figure, people have been decreasing in stature since Adam's creation. So understand this. Adam was 90 feet tall, but they've been shrinking ever since. But when you enter Jannah paradise, you'll be made 90 feet tall again. Can you imagine 90 feet tall men and women and whores and men with that height with eternal erections, how long those penises will be to deflower the women? Because when you enter Jannah, you're going to have all these whores with firm breasts to deflower with eternal erections. So a 90 feet human with an erection, how huge are these body parts? Sorry, ladies, I'm just telling you how filthy this religion is. But wait, let me get you some more. Here it is. Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. Book 40, Hadith 6809. Sahih Muslim. Right? Here it is, the link. Book 40, Hadith 6809 on Sunnah.com. Okay? The Book of Paradise, its description, its bounties, and its inhabitants. Chapter 11. People enter paradise whose hearts are like the hearts of birds. Okay, now watch. And we're going to wrap it up. We had no customers today. They were too scared. No customers. Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger saying, Allah, the exalted and glorious, created Adam in his image with his length of 60 cubits. And as he created him, he told him to greet that group. Wait, did you catch it? Allah created Adam. In his image, with his length of 60 cubits. Allah created Adam in Allah's image, in Allah's height of 60 cubits. Here you have an authentic narration saying, the reason why Adam is 90 feet is because he was created after the size and shape of Allah. And Allah's image, his shape, is also 90 feet. So Allah is 90 feet tall. But wait, the Quran says Allah is unlike anything in creation. Yeah. 
Because though Adam was created in his image, he wasn't created as his, as his twin because Adam has a right hand, a left hand, two eyeballs, ears, mouth, two legs, two shins, two feet. Whereas Allah has two right hands, one left hand, three or more eyeballs, and a foot and a shin, but we don't know if it's two feet or two shins. So yes, Allah is unlike Adam because he's a grotesque, deformed, ugly-looking Frankenstein, a grotesque, deformed humanoid whose shape was not made from clay, whose shape is uncreated and eternal. That's Allah. And we're done. That's Allah. You caught it? Now this poses a problem. Since Allah's grotesque, deformed, monstrous shape, he's like a glorified, ugly-looking Frankenstein. Right? He's 90 feet tall of ugliness. Three eyeballs like a cyclops. Two right hands and a left. <clears throat> a shin that's hairless. A foot that he's going to put in hell and barbecue and sacrifice for the salvation of Muslims. And he's got genitals. Now, if he's 90 feet tall, those are some huge genitals, some huge nuts. Okay. And this shape is uncreated. Well, here's the problem. For Allah to have always existed with a shape and a body means that Allah is not the creator of all space and place. Okay? What do I mean? For Allah to have a body, a shape, that body and shape needs a place, a space to dwell in. Whatever the space and place is, it has to be uncreated because Allah's body is uncreated and His body needs a place to live in. Because it needs a place to live in, that place, that space that Allah occupies has always existed because it's as old as Allah and it's uncreated. That means there is certain space, certain place that Allah did not create. And if he did not create, he doesn't own it. In fact, that space and place contains Allah because Allah needs it because he couldn't exist without it. So that space and place is greater than Allah because it contains Allah and Allah didn't create it and he didn't control it, but he's contained by it. So Allah did not create Every single part of space and place. This is Islam. And we're done. We're finished. Finito. Capish? This is Islam. Now, guys, help me to help you. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to make sure you're going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you perfect illumination to understand everything you saw, everything you read in here. So if you have to rewatch it, reread it, please do it. Number one. Number two, you can take my stuff, upload them, translate them, clip them, but don't charge. I don't charge you, you don't charge. Number three, you have my permission to then teach this material through your own unique way. You don't need to simply clip me. You can take it, understand it, ask the Spirit to help you to present accurately, and you do it like Ahmed. You go to TikTok. You start a YouTube channel. Like Rob Christian, we need this to be multiplied and more people doing it through their own unique way. Not just uploading, but teaching it. Teaching it online, start many TikTok accounts, Instagram accounts, YouTube pages, and teaching it locally. It's yours. God called me to full-time ministry to equip you. Why to equip you? So you can be soldiers using this and not just a handful of us. Do your part. The articles are there. <clears throat> okay the material is there the facts are there absorb them and share them and pray for Aisha the triune God who lives Father, Son, Holy Spirit flood you in his infinite peace and joy and love and let me remind you Aisha Jesus said John 11 25 26 John 11 25 26 Aisha Jesus said I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he are dead, yet shall he live. And he who believes 
and lives shall never die. Do you believe this? Because Jesus is alive. If you die in Christ, you cannot die because he's real. He's not fantasy. And those who die in Christ are resting pain-free, awaiting the resurrection of their bodies. Take that to heart. Your Lord lives, and those who die in the Lord are alive. Because he lives, we live. In fact, let me give you the, these verses. John 14, 18 to 19. John 14, 18 to 19. Lord willing, in a few days, I will get back to doing Christian topics, I promise you. Right? Finish my discussion of Isaiah 7, 14, Christmas and Luke 1 and 2, going back to Messianic Prophecy Series, Destroying Calvinism, Romans 9. Also, the Lord's Prayer and whatever God puts in my heart. John 14, 18 to 19. Here it is, Aisha. John 14, 18 to 19. Jesus has promised to you, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I'll finish that series too, God willing. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will live also. See, he swore to you and he promised and he cannot lie. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you by the spirit. And because I live, you will live also. Don't be afraid. Death is not the end of you because Jesus is alive. There you go. A true Aisha who follows the true God revealed in Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Now, guys, if you've been blessed by my ministry, if you've been blessed by these sessions, if you've been blessed by these articles, here's how you can bless me back. There are many of you who are called to be prayer warriors. God has gifted you to just pray, and you can pray for hours and intercede. Please commit my daughters and I to daily prayer and ask your churches to pray. God grant my daughters and I divine, miraculous, supernatural, physical safety, security, protection, and health. Keep me healthy and fit that I stay healthy and use my health to glorify the Lord. My throat stay perfectly strong and healthy. Pray the Lord will grant them salvation at a young age. They fall in love with the Lord and walk with the Lord. And I stay holy and pure and righteous. Love Jesus more, worship him more, and learn more. Because the more I learn, the more I, share, I will share with you. And pray for the miracle that God will bring them to me. Remove Martin. Please mention him by name. Martin Simon Yaakov. That God removes him. He is taken away from their lives. No other man brought in their lives. So their mother will fear the Lord and repent. And I can have them every day. And God protect me from corrupt legal system. And the Lord provide generously financially so I can provide for them. Provide for myself and help those in need to do the work of ministry. Please pray. With that said, Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. He's alive. He is real. He's almighty. He's not fake. The Bible supernatural. The Bible itself is a proof that Jesus is Lord. And all these dreams and visions and miracles that millions are seeing all, all over the world, like Ahmed, the miracle of his son in a coma. Christians pray, and he feels his power coming over him, and his son wakes up. His wife, go listen to the testimony. His wife. His two kids were sick, and she cried out by faith, Jesus, if you are Lord, then heal my daughters. And she sees Jesus in a vision, putting his hand on both her children. On the first day, on one child, the next day he appears again on the other child. It's all in the testimony. Christ is alive. Muhammad is dead. All of the Quran is fake. The Quran is of the devil from the pit of hell. Jesus is Lord. The Bible is true. And the one true God is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And Jesus is God in flesh, flesh from the holy flesh of the virgin. Love him, worship him. He's alive. He's in love with you. He'll never fail you. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Purify us. My daughters, our loved ones, in your blood, fill us. My daughters, our loved ones, with your spirit, keep us in love with you and never betray you, never fall into any scandal, but glorify you, Lord. And give me the health and holiness that I need to make you happy and to serve your church and love your church and build your church. And strengthen my voice to be pleasing to their ears. Amen. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. We need you, Lord. You don't need me. We need you, Lord. They don't need me. We need you, Lord. Feed us the flesh of Christ and the blood of Christ. Do that for our loved ones, my daughters. Please, Lord Jesus, increase in us. 
do not let us, do not let me shame you. We want to love you more than anything. We do, but you know our flesh, and at times we are weak, but you are strong. Be mighty in us to hate Satan, hate the world, hate the flesh, and love you and glorify you, Son of God. Love you, Lord, please. Love you, Lord Jesus. Help us to never grow cold and love you more passionately. You are infinitely beautiful, especially in light of this ugly filth called Islam. Save the Muslims. Save them, Lord, before it's too late. We love you, Babi. We love you, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And Theotokos, Holy Mother, Blessed Mother, Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen.